What is going on, everybody? It is episode 535 of Pop Culture Crisis. My name is Brett, and I am here with my co-host. Would you introduce yourself, please? Hi, Crisis Actors. It's Mary. Happy Friday. Today, I feel like I'm turning a new leaf. I'm becoming a basic B-I-T-C-H <laughs> because I have a Stanley Cup. You cuss on this show all the time. But not in the first 15 <laughs> oh, seconds. Oh, yes, that's, that's Think about point. the ad yes. revenue, Brett. Yes. Come on, business. <laughs> and we have a special guest on the show today. Hello, sir. How he are you? Hello, hello, guys. Thank you for having me on and hello crisis actors yes. i didn't know you said that That's <laughs> yeah but, introduce yourself hi what's up guys my name's siaka masaqua um actor writer producer some uh, part-time politician <laughs> and full-time human being and uh and j6 political prisoner oh uh, yeah i forget that one prisoner, yeah. sometimes yes. your resume you can't do it all you know I <laughs> you gotta leave that. some stuff off yeah and then people are like oh you j6 uh, yeah yeah we can get into that. i actually i think resume but i think that's the worst thing in the world i hate uh if there's two things in the world i hate it's it's like updating a resume yes. and jo and like applying for jobs yes like yes. i will stay at a job for like it's a good thing i love <laughs> you're this applying job. for jobs to get away from me aren't you uh, it's you know, like i love this job so i'm very lucky right but yeah. like every other job that i had i stayed for years just because i'm like oh, i don't want to do I that. I that i got st other stuff well, to do and, and it's funny you say that because like i've been in hollywood since 04. so my resume stuff it's really hard when you're looking for other jobs to say uh well i've been acting yeah for 10 years like okay that doesn't mean anything acting mm -hmm. from 2004 to two, like it doesn't yeah. mean anything as opposed to working at starbucks means something to someone well so, actually i mean to me it means something because i'm an imdb connoisseur oh, so, so i uh, I, I i regularly contribute to the uh, <laughs> to the trivia section on IMDb. <laughs> I, I do, do. it's an extremely I, underrated place for yes. dating so, so, yes. so, sometimes i will <laughs> you meet I, the I love will. of your life on the really? imdb trivia well, hey, really? so imdb used to have really really good message boards where you could talk about <laughs> movies i'm not even kidding you back really? in the day there was like really good message boards wow. back on the day no more. Uh, and they got rid of them that was that was a, a dark day for me i enjoyed that stuff well you know everyone start cursing <laughs> you know go. guys we got a bunch of stuff to talk about yep. today it's going to be a lot of fun we've already we've already been getting in the weeds talking before the show but we're going to be getting into remember when i said to you guys i said that like they would learn all the wrong lessons from the barbie movie well <laughs> i was right they're uh they're now going to start a deluge of toy movies number one being a live action bob the builder it's actually roberto the builder because they've race swapped bob from He's bob Latino. the Builder. Yeah. yes wait it's, what yes this is real oh, yes yeah. this is a real thing this, this is a real thing because hollywood is beyond parody see yeah. You can't make this stuff up. There's more. Just wait. <laughs> wait, there's more. <laughs> but wait, there's more. So we're going to be no. talking about that. We're also going to be talking about the new movie from Sydney Sweeney in which she plays a slutty nun. Okay. I, that's That might be a misinterpretation of the material. <laughs> I don't know. But we'll watch the trailer together and you can see... Hollywood just loves blaspheming and yes. disrespecting Christians. Yeah. Yeah. And I love being fake news, so slutty nun. We'll, yeah. we'll, 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 <laughs> I mean, we'll see yeah, what happens. They, yes. they we'll pretty much up. almost show her naked in the trailer. So, Seriously? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so basically now they moved on from making movies and just making porno. Yeah. It feels that way, which is odd because yesterday we talked about this topic where an actor named, um, what was it, Dan Benson, mm -hmm. was not allowed back to the Wizards of Waverly Place, Place reboot because he's now doing porn. And I'm like, yeah. how is that any different? And now he's acting Levinson? like a victim about it. Like, yeah. damn, you guys couldn't have called me back like before I started an OnlyFans. It's rough, man. <laughs> hey, man, it's hard in these streets, man. That's Bidenomics for you. It's not easy, man. That's Sometimes Bidenomics, you gotta, man. You gotta, look, look, it was a trope back in the day to make uh, movies and television shows about the, the stripper who's working her way through law yeah, school. Yeah, 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 but yeah. the difference is, is they weren't putting it on the internet, yes. so then they could go to the law firm and mm -hmm. then they wouldn't follow them there. Uh, the internet age is rough. It's, it's, uh, it's crazy. We're not just going to talk about that. Uh, if you remember not that long ago as well, we talked about... Uh, all of the new things that Gen Z is discovering, we talked about how <laughs> they discovered how to walk without a phone. Yes. Uh, they called it silent walking. Well, they've discovered something new. They've discovered getting a second job. It's called polywork. They've, they've so given can the be, name. You can be polysexual. You oh, can be polyamorous. And you can be a poly worker. They have discovered the hustle. Yeah. Yes. The hustle. Yes. This, that's which, what it is. which most poor people have known for life. The, their entire existence of humanity. <laughs> what, why do the Gen Zers? You guys tell me this. Why do you guys always have a label everything? I'm not a Gen Z. I'm I'm I'm, I'm a millennial. You're a millennial. I'm, I'm, I'm a late. I'm almost a Gen Xer. Okay. So I'm, well, I'm Mary. Why why do they have to label everything? <sighs> that's an interesting question. 
I don't think I have an answer. That, we'll, we'll get back on the second yes, segment. Yes, I, I would honestly <laughs> like to. I would like to like delve into that more. I think it has I a mean, lot to do with the fact that we now label every sexuality and now. Well, why do they call them. things adulting? Right. It's that probably because thing. their parents didn't teach them how to do you know basic adult human tasks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, doing their taxes, balancing a checkbook, working on a car, anything like that. They they call it all adulting. Yeah. That makes sense to me. It's it started. Yeah, they're uninitiated they, into they the human world. They're like aliens. They don't know how to. Well, when you have everything being special and everyone gets, it, I think it goes all the way back to the trophy generation, right? Everyone getting a trophy from just showing up. Was that millennials? Yeah, it was millennials. Yeah, that was, yeah. That was millennials. So that meant everything you do, you do, and you did, then had to have some type of a title with it. It's right, horrible. it's gonna eventually get to a place where wiping your butt is gonna be a special thing that they're gonna they're gonna you know I can't I was, wait I was soft hot cleaning. girl wiping hot <laughs> green, uh, um, no I did hey pen, patent pending we we, yeah. we got it here first sure. we I was so sure. much happier before I heard that term I liked hot the term hot girl walks was nice because you're like promoting exercise you can work out and you'll look hotter right yeah. we got a twenty dollar one here from Mike he says before the black pills is there any white pills today. Can ben Shapiro is a rapper now. That's a white pill. We're, and we're going to talk. We're going to react to that video live on yeah. the show here today, guys. But before we get started, would you hit the like button on this video, please? And subscribe to this channel if you have not done so already. We have passed 96,000 subscribers. Ooh. We are on our way to 100,000. So if you guys could go ahead and do that, share these videos with your friends. That way more people come in here and hang out. Like I said, it's a pyramid scheme that we're building here. You share the videos yes. out. It's multi-level marketing. And then they share it. They share it. By the time they're done, like somebody from your hometown has sold you a bunch of stuff. You don't need messaging you on Facebook. Hey, I have an interesting business opportunity. Exactly. That's what, that's, that's what uh, what's, we're going to make this channel. Have you ever sold knives? <laughs> like that's I actually know go. somebody who has. I have who actually. Has that's why. Knives. I, yeah, cut, cut code, baby. My my mom. Uh, my mom did Mary Kay. I, that's you know, poly work for you. Yes, that. it that's... is. My mom was both a social worker and sold Mary Kay. She poly worked way yeah. back before it was cool. Yeah, my mom did too. Yeah, everyone was doing poly work. <laughs> it's called taxes. You got to pay your bills, you man. You got bills to pay. So, guys, uh, also remember, as uh, we just saw, all super chats twenty dollars and over. We will interrupt the discussion. We will read those right then and there, except during the interview portion. We will pay respect to all people involved in the interview portion. That way they can tell their story without uh, everyone interrupting them. But you know, the rest of the time, you got a $20 super chat, we'll interrupt and read it. So if you guys are ready, we will just get started and go. Mary, are you ready? I'm ready. Siaki, are you ready? I'm ready. Let's go ahead and get started. Do I need to buckle up first? Yeah, you're going to actually for this first thing because it's kind of weird. So okay. Dune 2, <laughs> new worm-themed popcorn bucket. What the hell is this thing? Man. Okay, I'm sure everyone's going to be it's really... Just a mature about this. It's just a flashlight for your hand, mm -hmm. and that's not exactly appetizing when it's popcorn, right? TMZ started a poll to ask, what does this popcorn bucket look like? One, where the sun don't shine. Yes. Two, a lady's flower. Or three, a jet turbine, obviously. Technically, all of those are correct. Yes, all yes. Correct. Te technically, or, or you go, yes. 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 It's just like you're supposed to stick your hand into the worm mouth. Yes, you all are. All the way, every time that you want popcorn. I like, like the better I... idea that he actually takes it with both hands and just puts his head into it. Oh. I don't like it. Oh, that, I don't like it. It looks straight up like a butthole, guys. I'm sorry. We're going to go. Can I say butthole? Yes. On... Yes. <laughs> yeah. yes. It, you could call it a BH. A a BH. I just like the a BW, but no, a whole all of it. No, I like the whole. I like the butthole. I, I don't. <laughs> hold on, wait. Let's rewind. I don't like the butthole. I like that the answer of this is the butthole. Correct. Yes. Yes. Correct. Sorry. All right. Uh, yeah, we're not going to get pulled down in this show. I think IRL got pulled off at record time last night. Okay. No, I said butthole. <laughs> wait, what happened? Uh, I think uh, I think there were calls to violence. Oh <laughs> no. We're not we're not going to do that here. We're there not. were yes. calls to man. This I, I, we are not calling to. Violence. No, not at that all. That never man. happens on the show. No, we're calling nope. to laughter and super chats. Exactly, and fun. Yeah, we want fun. We want fun. So, go, go, I, I mean, I'm excited to go see Dune too. So, the fun fact: when we went and saw Dune the first time, Tim just walked out at like the halfway point. He just couldn't take it. He just left. Really? So he left, and then I ended up finishing it on on streaming. But it wasn't the same because a Denis Villeneuve movie really does need to be seen in theaters because he's so damn good at his job. So <laughs> it's I'm, true. I'm, I, you know, I actually want to support the ones who are actually making good art yeah, you know yeah, as much yeah. as i hate most of hollywood today i have no problem i, I still watch sicario once once a year <laughs> i do i mean i quit watching the first dune midway through yeah. really i don't know it's just boring too to me a, too slow of a burn yeah i'm yeah. not really i'm not patient with it i'm not familiar like i'm not huge on the lore like yeah, i didn't yeah, have yeah. a i don't have a deep connection i never to the i never read them, or yeah. anything like that but well, i enjoyed the movie you know what they i thought they did there because visually i stuck with it because vision I'm, I'm a fantasy exactly. guy so I, I can hang out two hours in any kind of fantasy world 
I may not like it in the overall story, but I'll be like, oh, that's a cool building and a weird thing walking. I feel like they they tried to make us care about people that weren't likable. In the movie? Yeah. I and mean, it a makes lot it of it tough. was like very, very like all the personalities kind of melded together. Yes. To the they all seem like the same yeah. version of, of the same guy, right? He was a younger version of his dad who was a version of of, of the, you know, the, the well, hard-ass soldier. Flat. Yeah, yeah right? they're very flat, except for Jason Momoa because yeah. he's, he's Jason, Jason Momoa. Momoa. He came in, he was like, I'm a person. I'm a human <laughs> being, you know? <laughs> and then like, that's the best thing you ever taught in acting class is be a person, mm -hmm. yep. you know, so. All right, uh, and in other bad Hollywood news, uh, <laughs> Hollywood is, is struggling, as we all know. NBC Universal lost $2.7 billion on Peacock in 2023. Here's the, the funny part. It's actually worse than what they lost in 2022, which was $2.5 billion. Wow. These streaming services are Damn. essentially gigantic money pits where they just like imagine like um you know like when 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 uh, Scrooge McDuck like dives into <laughs> yeah. the mm -hmm. to the pit of money yeah. that's what it is except the money's on fire it's on fire and and nothing's being made of it they only add a couple million subscribers I'm like it's me I'm the person who watches Peacock Literally, <laughs> just yeah, me I don't, me and nobody else I don't think I have we've yeah. got to stop buying these streaming services yes. if we ever want to win the culture war yes. this is my I'm, point look at this point there are alternative streaming Sites. I, yes, yes. I have a lot of, I have like, a, I have a large physical media collection. None of that is here in, in Maryland. It's all at home. Oh. And I'm also like, every time I've ever done that, I then went in, you know, to other sites to, to get a downloaded sites. version of it because I don't want to have to constantly get up and put a disc in a player. I'm just oh. saying like we like owe nothing a, to movie, these corporations. We owe nothing to them. Yes. If it's a movie with if if we're talking about extremely high definition for like a remaster of something, that's one thing. Mm -hmm. But if it's just some average movie, I don't care enough. I would have bought the DVD if I liked it enough, but I want it all on a just hard right drive here. so that I can just click a button. Like Mighty Ducks too. Exactly. Like, mm -hmm. I do own those on uh all, I know you do. That's so why I brought it up. My brother was an extra in the in the first one. Shut yeah. up. Yeah. I mean a lot of Minnesotans and Yeah, that's to right. Be, uh, yeah. Yeah. Gordon Bombay action. We'll yes, shout out. It's, it's really, really good stuff. And a lot of those, um, I played at a lot of like at the rink that they were in. Really? In that movie and stuff like that. Yeah, because okay. I played hockey growing up. We so. got a little. We got a little. We got a stuff. I have IMDb I trivia. Have, yeah. I, have, yeah. Yeah. I have multiple <laughs> Mighty Ducks jerseys. None of the actual team. It's all of the bad guys. I have the Iceland jersey from Mighty Ducks. Yes. Two, and I have the Hawks jersey from Mighty Ducks One. Nice. Also, fun fact: the guy who played Gunnar Stahl in Mighty Ducks Two is yep, yep. the goalie for the varsity team in Mighty Ducks Three. Really? Yep. Wow, I, we you know all the fun facts, uh, especially of Mighty Ducks. Yes, uh, Gordon Bombay. Yeah, you have to. <laughs> I, I, I love, love those it. movies. I love them. great family also, movies. Fun Back fun when fact, Disney was over. The, the third one is one of the earliest social justice warrior storylines, where the the girl that Charlie Conway is like into trying to date wants to change the name of the team because they find it demeaning because the name of the team is the Warriors and has a Native American symbol on the front. Wow, I didn't you know? even pay attention to Before that. Before it's time, way or way ahead yeah. of its time. Well, speaking to your point about the money pits yeah. right um this is why one of the things i've been doing we started an organization hollywood for freedom and it was like a lot of us conservatives out there just freedom-minded people in hollywood were getting you know kicked out if they express themselves and so we wanted to start that because places like daily wire babylon b um there are so multiple um even even things like uh, uh doc, frontline doctors frontline workers they started production studios even here tim cast right mm -hmm. they started production studios but yet they tend to just pick from where the, around from where they are. So if you're in, in you know Kentucky, you're not going to get the same level of talent as you're going to have that's out in Hollywood. Which is why it was all moved to one place, anyways. Exactly. It's all it's all centralized in one in one location. When, and what we want to do with that is to be um, an option so that people can pull from the talent of Hollywood without the craziness of Hollywood. Because we need this is an example right here. If this is the only thing that exists, they're going to continue to pour money into it because it's, it furthers their agenda. We need to invest into this, into content like this. Again, what I love that you know Tim and everyone's been doing here, what Daily Wire has been doing. We have to put money behind this. We can't just have one sketch come up. Everyone loves it and go, all right, see you later. Yeah. Where's our sitcoms? You know, where's our, where's our, our every day you're going to go, every Tuesday you're going to sit down and you're going to watch this one show that's going to make you laugh so you can go out to your friends and go, I'm a this, I'm a that, like they did Friends. 
It right? reminds like the p- thing I always point out to people. I said the the reason why it's so hard to defeat Hollywood is because they have decades of infrastructure. Yeah. So like even the worst of the of the Hollywood productions that are made still operate at a higher level quality wise as far as camera quality, production quality. Most of the time, if we're talking like the low, even the low budget Hollywood movies that are coming out yeah, in theaters, yeah. Well, yeah. still there's a baseline level of uh, of quality that just it, they have the production prowess, but the storytelling is go. trash. Yeah. And so, but that's the part that people will draw to more than just the shiny lights is yeah. a good story. Yep. And if they start to know we're going to get good stories on a certain side of the uh, of the fence, that's where they're going to go to before the see we saw she uh, what was it she Hulk, the yeah. CGI was garbage. Lost so much money. Mm-hmm. We're seeing all these things. They pouring money into the CGI, but it's not doing anything. Two hundred and fifty. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and just on a on one season. Yes. One season. So so I'm saying you go okay. Let's let's go. I don't know, maybe $10 million with the amount of camera equipment that people have today, the ability that they can produce for themselves, the talent that they have. You do a $10 million TV show or a movie, um, in a sense, this side of the fence, I, I'm almost guaranteed, much like Nefarious that came out mm-hmm. with Steve Days' movie, mm-hmm. it blew Hollywood out the water. Not because it had the mm-hmm. camera, same, well, it did have good camera and good actors, but they were they were a uh, in yeah a sense, they had a they had like a, like actors from Hollywood yes exactly movie, they so, use yes. good actors who I go to church with one of them yeah so we have to which, use uh, the talent one? that we have Godspeak Church and Thousand Oaks no uh, which uh, which actor did you have? oh <laughs> <laughs> I was like do you want to go yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. we'll fly to L A he, he played the uh, he played the warden okay he played the warden awesome. his name escapes me right now and I'm sorry but he, uh, yeah we did that we also did things where we hosted at our church a screening and a talk of, about, uh, you know, nefarious. Yeah. So we have to, I like to say, we have to create our own celebrities. We have to create our own thing. We can talk about this and make fun of them. And then we got to turn around and thank you guys again for having me on yep. because this is what it does. Mm-hmm. It goes out there and go, you see that person over there hustling? Yep. That person's worth you following. You see that person over there making something beautiful? That's not, screw Kanye or Nikki or whoever else because they're going to be crazy. The people we're missing and this is when we can start to gather our forces, if you will, you know, and start to build up from each other. Everyone has their space they can play in. Let's use that to help elevate so those kids have something to turn to. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And another reason uh, is because Hollywood doesn't seem to know what it's doing with <laughs> itself. This is a story like, I don't know if anybody watched the trailer for the Roadhouse remake. First of all, I disagree with Doug Lyman on one thing. I don't think there needed to be a Roadhouse remake. No, 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 no. no, no, no. What remake has there needed to be? Exactly. Let's right? start like there. It's, uh, I, I don't know if there's necessarily. I, I would have to. I would have to think about that one. Yeah, that's a there, hard one. There are plenty one. of movies that I've seen that uh, I didn't realize were remakes until after. It's just because of my age, right? Like, fair so enough. Fair there, enough. There are some there that would probably. Yeah. In the chat, guys, what uh, what is a remake that you guys believe? <laughs> because back in the in the nineties or the two thousands, there would have been existed. There would have existed remakes that would have. Oh, I've got one. Gone huh. in sixty seconds with Nicolas Cage. I love the the Gone in sixty you, seconds with Nicolas Cage far more than the original one. Uh, Which I only there saw a, it once, and see, um, I didn't even know that. Yeah, it was a remake. The Italian Job was a good remake. There you go. That was, but but the difference is, I saw something where it's fourteen movies coming out, blockbusters, mm-hmm. are either sequels yep. or remakes. That's the, entire the difference. box office the entire. is derivative content. Exactly. Now. So outside of like what you're saying, what we mentioned were random every yeah. five to ten years. How long can we keep this up? Yeah, we can't because they 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 don't allow creativity ultimately in Hollywood anymore. So they can't. They don't. They don't it. want to throw the money behind it because they, no. they IP is king to them. Well, IP is king, but it, it, I think it goes into a, a broader spectrum of the world where we're seeing where everyone is is uh, uh, starting to sound like a parrot and just repeating the talking yeah. points. If you don't have creativity. You don't think outside the box. You can't push back. The only movies I've been into, like I loved Bullet Train. I thought Bullet I thought Train was, was cool. I thought Bullet Train was yeah. fun because it didn't feel the same way. Yes. I, I'm excited to see Argyle, which we're going to see with, uh, ah, with Henry Cavill. Yes, like, me too. Like, yep. Those yep. those types of movies appeal to me these days. We got twenty dollar one here from Mikey. He says Stargate or Battlestar esque is fun. Did y'all like either of them or both? Uh, I'm I'm okay with. Uh, I, I've watched a, a fair amount of the first couple of. of SG one, yeah, yeah, but me I'm too. not uh, like space opera and space exploration aren't really my genres. Really, per se. no. I was a huge star no. Star Trek fan. No. I was a, a lot, big dork. A lot, a lot of people in the space are yes. right. Like a lot, like yeah. Tim loves Star Trek. Star Trek, stuff like that, the so. next generation. Uh, I sat through Deep Space Nine marathon, marathon <laughs> like four years ago. Just sat there. It was like all day. But they're ruining yeah. both of those. Uh, now, yes, so. they're ruining all of it because they're going by again. They're not going by the creativity. They're going by agenda. Yep. And so everyone now looks up and has to watch the stuff going. Correct. Man on Fire with Denzel Washington. Remake. There you, really? Yes. 
Oh ah, yeah, yep. The uh, the original good. one was uh, about a decade before that, if I remember correctly. There are some there are some good examples there. That, but they, uh, again, I think those were spread out a little bit. They weren't yeah. back to back to back. Right. Yeah, it would have been at least a decade before yeah. before the original. I, this is one of those things. Oh, so you mentions Mission Impossible. Yes, because Mission Impossible was a TV show before it became. But a movie it wasn't. Franchise. It wasn't a remake. That's the thing. It wasn't a remake because they had some of their originals yeah. come in and be later. They were like later on down the line. That's yeah. what it was. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a full remake. It's it was more of like a ten yeah, exactly. People are uh, people are mentioning like if this is one of those ones where I'd want some. Ex I'd want to like some time to think about yes. this. I'd have to go through my yeah. collection. Yeah. So, so but, anyways, the Roadhouse. <laughs> this is what he said. This is what he says. He says when Roadhouse opens at the South by Southwest Festival, I won't be attending. The movie is fantastic, maybe my best, and I'm sure it will bring the house down and possibly have the audience dancing in their seats during the end credits. But I will not be there. First of all, I just read this as just entitlement and, yes. and stupidity, yeah. but that's just me. He says, my plan has been to silently protest Amazon's decision to stream a movie so clearly made for the big screen. I wish it had come out to the big yeah. screen. One of the comments that I saw was perfect. They said, where are most movie theaters nowadays? Malls. Where does Amazon not want you to go? Malls. Malls. Wow. That's a good point. Wow. Yes. I didn't realize that's that. That's a great yeah. point. Yeah. Like, wow. Why would they send you out to shop? when they can just keep you on the app and have you buying stuff yeah. from them. That's very true. But this is what's going to happen. I really do believe that eventually we will be stuck with Amazon and Apple and they're going to own everything because their companies are built outside the business model of needing. Hollywood has decided that they want to subsidize their work. Yes. That uh, a couple of movies and bad investor capital ends up making up for thousands of movies that don't make any money whatsoever. Right. And with that business model, they will eventually be bought off by either Apple, which re relies on tech, Mm -hmm. and Amazon, which relies on two-day shipping. Exactly. Right? So, well, and I think you're right about the Hollywood falling, but again, it gives, I think it does give an opening to good stories. And if, we, if we're making good stories, we will, people want story over just Flash. They want it. And, and Daily Wire, we just, you know, did Lady Ballers. Everyone loved that. It's a great comedy. Um, but what, they're coming out with the Pendragon series right now. Like, yep. that's going to blow people out of the water. Yeah. But it's because we're forced to do it like we're americans we have to remember we're, we're the creative ones yep. if they're dying over there in the art that we kind of gave ourselves up to great let's do something else <laughs> you know like let's build this for ourselves you can actually see the decline of western uh of at least of this type of art in hollywood because uh they spent the last two decades trying to get china to care about their movies china's top 20 box office movies this year were all from you know because it's china yeah and they don't allow very much in from other countries there isn't a, even though plenty of american movies made it there i think they're only allow it's like 15 or 20 yeah. percent oh, yeah. but it's, it's plenty like at least five to ten right not a single one of them topped their top three really? box office. So American American art as an export isn't the same level of uh, of importance that it used well, to have. Part of the reason um, when China started buying up a lot of these uh, Hollywood industries, uh, Hollywood yeah. production companies, Tencent like, and oh yeah. yeah, and they did um, uh, not New Line. It was. Uh, uh, um, uh, Synda, Syndic, uh, Syndico or something Oh, like it's uh, Syncope. Yeah, Syncope, yes. yes. And so they were doing a lot of like, they did uh, Watchmen, they did a lot of these, those types they of They did movies. a lot of stuff with like uh, DC, because it would have been like, Syncope would have been... Um Oh, uh, who's the guy who did the Dark Knight and the uh, not, Chris, no, Christopher not Nolan? Nolan. It's, I'm, I'm thinking of the the producer. Somebody else will be able to know who I'm talking about. But a lot of those yeah, people yeah. worked with Syncope at that time. And so what yeah. they did was they pushed they pushed them to push that agenda. Yeah. So they pushed the feminizing men, emasculating women. Yep. And so that's what they did so much that in the last three to four years, yeah. they've actually cut off Disney and they cut off Hollywood three, four years ago. Yeah. So going into the pandemic, they were struggling, they, but now they've been in a rhythm of, hey, this is what we're gonna do for the big cash that China offered. So now when China pulls it out, they've been going this direction for so long, we're over here going, come over here. They don't know any other way to go because they've been doing it for like 12 to 18 or yeah. 12 to 15 years now. It's, it's really, I've watched the industry kowtow to China and China's like, do more of this stuff. Now they go, we, boom, we don't want any of it. Mm -hmm. And My so favorite, now their stuff goes to the top. We go to the bottom. Becoming self-sufficient without us. Yeah. Exactly. My favorite was uh, when they made Moonfall and, uh, and they got all their funding from Tencent and it has the random Mandarin speaking nanny that's never explained. <laughs> totally a studio note. Yes. Like, this character has yes. to exist. If you go back, you'll see all these random movies back like five, ten years ago where they'll have a random uh, uh, Chinese woman in it who barely speaks, like Pacific Rim. Do you remember yep. that? They're, oh, yeah. They were one there to sit there and just look and, and, uh, and then randomly say a line. You go, oh, that's why. Yeah. Yeah, you, you don't know English. <laughs> it's, it's I, I, I saw Pacific Rim for the first time this year. Oh. I'd never seen Pacific Rim before. Yeah, it's all right. It's yeah, a nice little right. romp. You know? so, so what it was was MGM, uh, he made this movie for MGM, mm -hmm. but then MGM got sold to Amazon. Mm -hmm. 
So also, by the way, MGM Plus is the most pointless of the streaming services. <laughs> That's from somebody who has a lot of streaming services. Even I can't. They uh, haven't merged those. No, like, you can't. Like that's the crazy thing is like uh, like if you I was like oh that's great now I'll be able to watch all the James Bond movies on Amazon Prime wrong why no but, uh, because there's different licenses for different yes. movies so like they have the, they have all of the the ones you'd expect but then the ones that I actually like like I love the world is not enough yeah. I don't know if anybody even remembers that I one remember it's that not one. it's not on there really uh, neither is, is that the, Pierce Brosnan yeah, it was, yeah. It was the, the third and the fourth Brosnan ones yeah. aren't on there and I wow. I actually like both of them even though the die another day is really bad I liked it <laughs> yeah I liked it too um, so <laughs> you know it's it, that's the problem with the with the studios wow. is, so he's saying that he's uh, he's pissed because his movie's not coming out in theaters yeah. Personally, I don't know if you needed to make a roadhouse. It's got Conor. McG I'm interested to see how Conor, how good Conor McGregor is at being a bad guy because he's the antagonist. You know, movie. you're right. They didn't need to make ro another roadhouse. I don't know how many people will go because they use the IP name roadhouse. Yeah. If they made this thing said backyard brawl, it would have been just as fine. Yeah. Like we're taking road the name roadhouse, and again, this is just showing you how like lost they are with creativity it's the same movie change the name people don't think anything of it and then now you have jake gyllenhaal with a possible franchise not that is actually patrick swayze you yeah. know it, you don't have that thing on top of it anymore his patrick swayze's the late patrick swayze's wife spoke up and said uh, because people were saying like uh this is they were they were talking about uh it's by this movie not coming out in theaters that it will uh not get the oscar buzz it, it might deserve and his wife's like his wife's like bro it's, it's Roadhouse. Roadhouse. <laughs> it's it's a guilty pleasure. It's not supposed it's, to be no, Oscar worthy. No, <laughs> like, it's Roadhouse. It's uh, it's like the people arguing over Barbie. Now. So, yeah. All right. Uh, and uh, this one in the tone deaf story of the day. If you know who Alyssa Milano is, Alyssa Milano. Uh, was it Charmed that she was on? But Charmed, she, Charles so, and Charles. So Alyssa Milano right. is being blasted on the or internet the right now because <laughs> she launched a fundraiser, a GoFundMe, to send her son on a baseball trip. All I'm saying is like, look, I don't know her financial situation. I'm just saying that this is the reaction you should expect from the internet because people tend to believe that if you're on camera ever at all, you got a lot of money. And I would actually true. guess that she's, but that's what I'm saying, but like she's, bon <laughs> she's got shows and stuff that have gone to syndication. Yeah. She likely is doing just fine. Do you know I how much she's worth? Begging others to fund your kid or kids' travel sports ambitions. Stop being able-bodied begging losers acting like you're 115 pounds of dripping wet skin and bones in a Depression-era breadline. Pay for it yourself. Get a second job. Find a sponsor. Take out a loan. Hold a car wash or sell sandwiches. I know. They or candy the, bars the door to door. Is, uh, the, ca the car wash is a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. Alyssa Milano is going to start shopping. Shoveling driveways. Yeah, it's very Americana it. to, yeah, to see, car wash. We used to sell uh, uh, candy bars to mm -hmm. win like stuff for yeah. like the YMCA. Like go and do it. And, mow some lawns. And, the, and mow some lawns. Get out there. And the other side of it is that her net worth is $10 million. $10 Million dollars. Now we don't know if those are accurate, you know. She, but she's a millionaire. Let's just we can give her that. Okay, she's she worth definitely a million has dollars. enough money. She, she's worth nine hundred and fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> At she least, still probably pay. Like for it couldn't trip. have in, even been something important, like a I don't know medical fund yeah. or something like that. Or my baseball's kids cancer. Yeah. Ba baseball's. I love baseball, but she's also the one who wore the crocheted masks that were that had holes in them mm -hmm. because but while yelling at everyone else for not wearing a mask. <laughs> I yeah. got. I actually got one of those crocheted, not hers. Yeah. I got a knitted one that I was walking through, and then you could put anything on it. And I go, I hate wearing masks. <laughs> so every time I'd go up, they look at me, and I go, <sighs> just so they could tell. Start you, coughing you, violently. So they could see. You're like, I could see your teeth. I'm like, that's the point. She should be able to pay for the the, the trip for at least for her son, right? At, at least and, for uh, her son. It's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. I mean, I guess her logic is like, look, I've got probably the biggest platform of any of the people on here. Then she's gonna make a bunch of extra money. Yeah, and that's. And that's the, the scam. That's a scam. That's the scam. Yeah. That's the scam. Let's report this. Who was the person that got in trouble because they posted a GoFundMe for a friend's cancer treatment or something? Oh. It was oh. a celebrity. Uh, uh, who Maybe was it was it? Selena Gomez. It was, yeah, it was one. It was a. It was a. It wasn't just a kind of fun, uh, famous one. It was a. It was it. Was it Olivia Wilde? No. Someone really like an yeah. investor, and and obviously they had twenty thousand dollars to spare, but they were asking no, the no, internet for what it. They, what they said is they responded and they said, "I." <laughs> but the friend I offered, The friend yeah. wanted it to be a community yep. effort, I guess, yep. instead of getting a handout from a friend. I don't know. Yeah. All right. Oh, so uh, I'm sorry, but Alyssa. at least that's something important. <laughs> All right. Yes, true. Mary, what the hell's going on with Nicki Minaj? 
She's going crazy. Okay, so she feels like she's being censored on TikTok. She says TikTok is silencing her and issued her an account warning. She said they're allowed to bully you, harass you, swat your home with a toddler multiple times and not be held accountable. Five companies paying to slander you, never defending yourself against lies for years and years. But the minute you do, you are immediately silenced. And she posted a screenshot so of her like account warning. Nicki Minaj, the free speech advocate we deserve, but not the one we need right now. Yeah. I don't know exactly. I think it's the one we need to. Uh, <laughs> I just go, welcome to being a conservative. Yeah. The water's warm. <laughs> Dude, you know? She, she <laughs> also <laughs> is like, she's liking a bunch of tweets that are making fun of Megan the Stallion for getting shot in the foot yes. by Tory Lanez. Um, Tory Lanez is in jail right now. Really? So, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. He yeah. was convicted. It's not, there's nothing wow. to debate about it. Uh, and he still made a song that was like, how are you? <laughs> like, Xavier, I, of course I didn't shoot you. Xavier is the top comment here. He says, uh, Xavier Jerusa says, she's really a Republican. I wouldn't yeah. go that far. Well, I mean, yeah, it, I mean well, we'll see. <laughs> they keep pushing her. Fiscally you know? conservative, maybe, but uh, Republican, that's that's a big claim to why have are to people, make. That's a, that's I, a big endorsement. I definitely say she's... Swatting her? I definitely think she's now becoming a conservative, though. She doesn't have to become a technically a Republican, yeah. but conservative, because if you're speaking out and you're getting uh, silenced and, and, and censored on social media... And all the conservatives... Congratulations. Right, first time. right yeah. congratulations. You're a conservative. Well, she's not voicing any political opinions. <laughs> I'm looking at a screenshot of all of these different comments she left about uh, <laughs> she went on a coke rant in someone's replies. Oh, well, there you go. A what? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> They're calling it a coke rant. I don't know whose uh, who's account <laughs> she's leaving all these comments on, but she said... Allegedly, you have been effing and essing a married man. Allegedly, it was an alleged blind, deaf, dumb item. Ooh. She said, allegedly, the executive who's alleged D-I-C-K, you allegedly sucked, hates you. Stop deleting my comments. You're going to lose this one. I don't know what this is about. Well, that's harassment. Yeah. Yeah. So there are like 20 different comments. I, I mean, a lot of these apps delete comments automatically. Yeah, like yeah. people, people, I've never deleted a comment in my life on this channel. Oh. I, I don't even really read them. Good but for like you. people will be like, like you deleted my comment. I'm like, bro, I don't even know what your comment was. Wow. Like, uh, like if it does certain words, will get your comment held for review automatically. Right. Automatically. Yeah. But like, I'm like, bro, I don't care what you say Look, on the channel. Cause I'm not reading it. People are saying like Nicki Minaj is a mother. She's a woman in her forties. She should not be acting this messy on social media. No one should. I mean, Megan the Stallion is literally half. Or at least age. have the have the good uh, the good sense to do it on Facebook, where all the boomers argue. Yeah, this is not a good look. <laughs> that's a good point. Well, like, you know, that's that's what it goes back to. We've lost that shame. We need mm -hmm. to bring shame back because yeah. if she's been she's forty with kids and she's been doing a, living that certain <laughs> way, why should why would she stop now? Like yeah. look at Madonna. Yeah. See Madonna's tour. Yeah, it, 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 it's it's. It, it, I love the idea that she can't start her concert till ten because she's got to take her nap at eight. <laughs> like she, she's just so old that she just falls asleep and like. I that is was, not possible without drugs. Yeah, I thought it was. I thought it was more of a Joe Biden like <laughs> we're gonna pump pump you in yeah, and then go. Just, and then she yeah, and then she's up. like, you know, she's, got like a, like a, she, a she's gonna start crying blood like yeah. Biden. And then going, girls, she just wanna have fun. What about grandmas? Oh, what about grandmas? Man. She's you know, uh, she's that's girls just wanna have. Fun. Yeah, <laughs> she, she, just, she doesn't need to work. Like, I mean, I, I guess I, yeah, the average, like she's a performer, right? She wants to continue to perform. She's under the delusion that she's still yep. in her twenties or thirties. Yeah, she is one of that major class of Hollywood that still thinks it's edgy to criticize Catholicism. Um, she, she's uh, she's pretty much that old dude at the club. Yeah, with the affliction jeans on. That he's was like, a, come on, brother, just stay home. That was <laughs> you a don't Chris Rock do bit back in the '90s where he's like, you don't want to be. He's, no. he's, he's like, you know, he's like, why do guys get married? Because like, you don't want to be the old dude in the club. That's you why know, I did he's it. Like, he's like, you know what I'm talking about. Yep. He's not old. He's just a little too old. Too to old be to be in the club. Yeah, <laughs> with the ripped jeans. Like, come on, man, where are your khakis man. at? Like, uh, yeah, get uh, put on put on a dress shirt. There's I mean, a reason why. Tuck it in. Tuck it in. There's a reason why I look. It looks cute at 20, <laughs> and it looks sad at 40. Yeah. There's a reason. That's just called life. Let's just live it and deal with it. You, it's better. Turn the page. It feels better. Are affliction jeans still a thing? I don't know. That was the only thing I had in my joke. How though. do they look? 
they uh, they're just they had ugly pockets in the yeah bag they had like these weird like kind of like Ed Hardy or, or all these other awful brands that I made fun terrible. of terrible they like <laughs> acid wash <laughs> Woo! thank Press you guys <laughs> do we have to get down is that yes. another raid you let's go you can dance oh. you can dance my bad I have flashback we guys are, we are not getting swatted right now <laughs> okay sorry guys I get flashbacks of raids and FBI's oh, and the government that. we don't want that okay. all right Kanye. Yeah, uh, oh, Kanye, Kanye. Kanye and Bianca, his wife, were recently on an outing, and a random man started accosting them in public, yelling a bunch of things about how he's Lucifer, yelling six six six. Wow. He said, "You ain't nifty." <laughs> I do like. I think nifty needs to make a comeback. This Let's year. take a look at this video. Uh, I I, I'm kind of down with the idea. I don't know of the what this guy's mo in. was, but yeah. Please. Homie, you got no chance. You got no chance. Look at you trying to copy the white boy so fucking bad. You ain't shit, boy. Just know that. He, he thinks he's so, he he's so smart, so new, so nifty. You ain't shit, boy. Don't at yes. least not play with Cardi too. I don't know a fuck, boy. I am a god, homie. Lucifer, homie. You ain't shit, boy. You ain't shit. He's like making devil horns at Kanye. I can tell you exactly what this is. Menacing. Don't do them. Yeah. So. <laughs> They're driving away. He's trying to block their car from leaving the parking lot. Wow. Now go. You ain't bad shit. Trust me. The one, homie. This lady's like, what's going on? Yeah. <laughs> She's just a random paparazzi, though. That lady's a paparazzi? Looks like it. She starts chasing after the car. I ain't cut it. I ain't cut it, dog. See, it's, this is the only thing that could make Kanye look stable. <laughs> maybe, he, maybe Kanye. Hired somebody, 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 somebody that much crazier. Kanye, you please back away from my vehicle, please. He's giving Kanye a run for his money. Oh, so the sad. Mm. Mm. This is my fucking block. Yeah. I am homeless. Twelve years, gay. Huh? I ain't listening since oh seven. Not since graduation. Which is funny because me neither. <laughs> no. Oh seven is closer to twenty years, bro. That's not twelve years. Yes. Jeez. It's following after the car. I'm the, like the he said I'm the six 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 at the end. Yeah. That's him. So, this guy possessed. Yeah, I can tell you exactly what this is. Oh, we got a super chat from oh. not that John Stewart. He said, Brett, rip the bandage off now. Play People's Joker. Well, since you asked, Bieber's so Joker. Politely. Okay. This is a thing on the show. Okay. I don't think we should even warn him. Yeah, let's go. What I it like is. To... This is. They have to pay to request this. Yes. To oh. show to and guests. Then, and, then and, have, and then if and the pain is too bad, they have to pay to make it stop. Okay. Yes. Okay. We need a $20 super Hi, show. Here we go. Three, 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 three months ago, I'm comedian fun. Brie LaRose dared me to re edit Todd Phillips' Joker. Now, I'm an Emmy nominated editor who works primarily with Tim and Eric, so I could give you your standard alt comedy Joker remix with fart sound effects and rhythmic cuts over nightmare drones and you'd gobble it up wouldn't you you little piggy but i'm currently unemployed and stupidly ambitious so for the past three months i've been writing a feature-length screenplay called the people's joker utilizing clips from the 2019 oscar contender Shady footage Twilder other comes in for the rescue Joker's stop past, the video he reason. says okay all right done. uh remember it costs 100 to play it to, to start it back up whoa. and play it the whole way through that's not true we've started again for 20. Nope. whoa trudy uh trudy jones is it was 100 to yeah. restart it. wow yep, yep. wow yeah. it got worse it, it, it gets, gets worse way later worse it gets trust way me worse. so trust so, me their, their their reaction to end it as quickly as possible is is well there's a reason yes. okay wow this is uh, exciting I, only, <laughs> I like it i like I that it happened this like for it. for new guests and okay. stuff like that because okay. i want everybody else to have to sit through what i had to sit through wow <laughs> that is terrible yes. um so batman villains are making content now yes huh? okay yep. good good that's All good right. to know um, uh, but so, the, with the Kanye thing, so I'll tell you what this is is gonna is it, it's it, it's sad because I actually saw this happen um, very not uh, not too long ago when me and my buddies were shooting sketches out in uh, downtown LA. There's a thing going on, and this happens a lot in, in in especially black liberal culture. Is they're focused on what I like to call the skin sin. They're focused on how black are you. Uh, like colorism. Colorism. Okay. And so I like to call it skin sin because it's playing in the flesh. And yeah. if you focus on that, you're going to go that far. So this man has been focused on the flesh. Listen to how he's talking to Kanye. He's doing this thing. To, his whole thing is going, I'm more black than you are, really. 
Yeah. And that's what we're really seeing. And so when he's saying I'm Lucifer, I'm 666, it says we play into the flesh. That's that's of the devil. So, of course, he's going down that path. That's what we're seeing here. And, and it's sad because what kind of is some of what he's putting out? There are people there that he's attracting to in that sense. And when you're dealing with this hyper hyperactive, pro-black, pro-skin sin type of move, this is the type of people you get. And so that's what he's actually experiencing now. It's really, I, I saw it for myself. And they said it, you ain't nothing. You think you're this, but you're nothing, boy. So he's using all the same epithet that all of a sudden, if it came out of your mouth, all we got to yeah. cancel you. But he can use it. All oh, why? Yeah. It's because they're playing in the same ballpark as wh- with, you know whatever other races. Yeah, that makes know. sense. If it were a white guy in that video, yeah. he would have already been doxxed. Oh, doxxed. He probably would have been probably. grabbed by other people. Hey, man, come on. This, this yeah. would be considered in the realm of uh, <laughs> staying in your own lane. So yeah. yeah. Oh, we yeah. got a $200 Uh-oh. super chat from Trudy Jones. Keep it going. He it? isn't getting off that Whole easy. Whole trailer it is then. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Whole trailer it is, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you. I'm we are playing the whole thing. Here we go. Like as requested. As well as additional footage that I'll be shooting in the privacy of my own bedroom, I'm creating an entirely new feature film. You heard me right. This is my feature film acting debut, and I'll be portraying both Harley Quinn and the Joker. Using these characters, which I definitely don't own the rights to, I will be sharing the story of my transition and how I overcame mental illness and the cycle of abuse that I was stuck in a few years ago. It's your standard queer coming of age story, only it takes place in the Batman universe. But wait, that's not all. I'm a huge fan of Suicide Squad, so The People's Joker will not only be the first film to feature a trans woman playing the Joker, it will also prominently feature Jared Leto's <laughs> seminal portrayal of the clown prince of crime. And no, I don't have his permission to use his likeness. I plan on using deep fakes, but the way I see it, this can be his way of apologizing to the trans community for Dallas Buyers Club. Plus, Jared, baby, look, everybody knows you were pissed Todd didn't cast you in his Joker. Don't sue me, be in mine. And you know what? I misspoke. This isn't just my Joker. This is our Joker. That's Very right. I'm opinion. opening up the yeah. creative process <laughs> yeah. to any and all quarantined artists, musicians, filmmakers, or actors who want to contribute to my vision. Do you want to design this film's Gotham City? Visit thepeoplesjoker.com. Do you want to play the fucking penguin? Then visit thepeoplesjoker.com. Do you want to record a cover of Small Town Boy by Bronxy Beat that'll be playing over a Wolf of Wall Street style montage about the drug use that I was engaging in in my early 20s to numb my gender dysphoria? Peoplesjoker.com. Wow. Warner Brothers legally won't be able to sue us if we I all work on this don't think together. And what person is actually a bad like than copyright at delivering their lives? Plus, no. I don't no. want to make a dime off this. I'm yeah, doing this for my mental health. To share my story using two of my favorite characters of all time and connect with other artists who are sad and broken because of this fucking pandemic. Oh, by the way, if you're a distributor who has any ideas on how to release an incredibly illegal film, Please get in touch with me. I really want to premiere this thing on July 4th, our failed nation's birthday. Because, well, I know I'm not the first person to say this, but this country this, is an so enema. See and the people's yeah. joker is the very rectal bulb syringe that can do the job. So visit thepeoplesjoker.com today. Yep, that's it. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen. Right. Thank you for wow. that, Trudy Jones. Wow. Thank you. Uh, we got hey, tw- Trudy. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we got a $20 one here from These Bitches Want Nikes. Uh, this might seem kind of <laughs> innocuous, but as a newer okay. fan, I'm just curious. Favorite movie from each of you? If you had oh. to pick, I don't know if you've ever discussed this before, love listening to the show on my delivery route. Thank you. Well, as you know, hmm. one of my favorite things to hear is that people listen well working because that's how I've always consumed podcasts. Yes. So thank you for that. Yeah. Uh, favorite movie of all time? I, I just watched it with my wife. We I, I like It's actually a series, but we put it one movie, The Lord of the Rings trilogy. There you go. Uh, they just, will love that answer. Yeah, right? that's yep. that's we and we got to a point. I worked it out so that right as the ring is destroyed. I'm a, such a dork as is destroyed. Midnight. Happy New Year. Ah, that's, that's like a thing now, so, like where like people say like if you start this movie at exactly yeah, this time yeah, yeah. Uh, and let it play through, it will. This thing will happen exactly yeah. at midnight on New Year. I timed it out. Yeah. I, I, you I just did cannot it. pause. Yes. No, you can't pause. No. Yeah. yeah. yeah so. Mary, favorite movie? That's like obviously the hardest question to answer, um, but I'm just gonna answer from like things I've watched recently. Oh. I liked Marie Antoinette. Sophia Coppola's film, and um, so I think I married an axe murderer. See, now you should have led with that one. Really? Why? Yes, because it gives you legitimacy. Because it was such a long, <laughs> it was an older movie. If you go, ah, the thing I watched yesterday was great as my favorite movie of all time, and 
<laughs> Miss like, things uh, things in recent memory because I'm not good at like coming up with but, my favorite blank of all time. The Axe Murderer I, that was one of the most underrated comedy slash dark comedy movies that you've ever that have ever been written. Congrats! Shout out to uh, oh, what was it, Mike Myers? Yeah. Mike Myers? Thank you guys. Rice party. Thank you guys. Um, yeah, this is and great. As me, <laughs> and as for me. Heat by Michael Mann is my favorite movie of all time. To this day. Yes, yeah. I love Heat. Uh, good movie. Actually, fun fact about that. So Chris Carr, Chris Carr works here. He's one of the editors over uh, at Scanner. Um, he, he would argue with me. He doesn't like, not a huge fan of most of Michael Mann's work. I am, oh. however, am. Collateral is one of my favorite movies. I love movies. Collateral. He's just one of my it. favorite movies. I even like the, the 2006 Miami Vice movie that didn't Wasn't even really make a whole lot of sense. Wasn't love that bad. movie. But the point is, is he's like, he's like, oh, Heat's not that good. But he just sent me a message the other day. He goes, I watched it again. It's amazing. I've changed my mind on it, and I'm now telling you this so that you can know that I am always right, ladies and gentlemen. He even went and made like a four-star review on Letterboxd for it. So oh what you should do, goodness. ladies and gentlemen, is just trust me. Just there trust you me. go. He he knows IMDb like the back yeah. of his hand. I, I like that that movie's uh, that's one. Of the, I have um like that's one of the few movies that like, I have posters of just of the movies that I love. And I'm actually not like a that's movie. A I'm not like a, a highbrow movie person. Right. I, I love like most of the movies I love are not garbage. In, uh, yeah. uh, I but, mean, trash. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. But <laughs> no, both, no. Yeah, like I don't have, a, I, I don't have any too. allegiance to like cinema as yeah. an art. I, if I, if a movie is fun, I can rewatch it a thousand times. Yes. It's perfectly fine with me. But like that is one of those movies that I, I will champion because when I was younger, like also it's really long and yeah. I don't like long movies, but it's one of those movies where when you're younger, you feel like the end of the movie is the end of the bank heist. When you're older, the end of the movie is actually when it ends movie, because yeah. you get to see how revenge plays the downfall of the Macaulay character. Right. Also, they are still making the Heat prequel, which I will maintain should not be made. They're making a prequel. Oh, with Adam Driver as Macaulay. God. Not a good idea. Not or good idea. or you just make a heist movie starring Adam Driver. Exactly. That's all you have to there do. There you go. I think he has uh, name Wrath passion. of Man was a really good one yeah, that came good. out a couple of years yeah, ago from uh, from Who did that movie? Uh, what's uh, Guy Ritchie? Yeah. Uh, Jason Statham. It's Guy Ritchie. It's a good movie. So uh, go check that one out as well. That was really good. All right. All the Transporter movies. Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Transporter one and two. Are, <laughs> oh, they're, they're so good. There's mwah, even a really bad mwah. Transporter TV series. Uh, yeah, that was I, with. Uh, with an actor named um, Chris uh, oh it's not Chris Bray but the point is it's not that good no, no. but it's still fun it's well, still the, fun do you remember I don't know if you guys remember the Blade TV show was one of the worst adaptations I never watched it but yeah I know that they uh, uh, did that one have Bokeem Woodbine in it no that was Sticky Fingers Sticky from <laughs> we got another $20 from Mikey said one from each what is the best trash movie you've seen recently so bad it's kind of good oh ooh I don't know if I have an answer. What do you mean? So bad, it's it's good. Kind of like the uh, the uh, what is it? The the artist one, the one that they were the playing. Oh, the room? the room. The like room. The room. Oh, uh, Gili. Mm. I can't. <laughs> did you finally watch? No. Did you, did you watch Gili? No. Uh, I I don't know. There there was a movie that came out a couple of years ago called The Bubble, which everybody hated but me. It was about COVID, and I I like. I'm not I'm not a it. Judd I'm not a Judd <laughs> Apatow fan per se. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I had no problem with that movie. I thought it was fine. Um, I you know I I was uh, I just recently watched it because I had to do it for uh, oh go, hypnotic uh, with Ben Affleck which was not oh, wow. a good movie but I liked it yeah, I wouldn't say good uh, so bad it was good it was just so bad it was bad I was <laughs> um, uh, leave the world behind I didn't see it. the one the, the Obama you don't don't even movie. that was a scam and we got got. Yeah. I had to watch it because I did a segment with uh, Jason uh, Jason Whitlock. Yeah. Okay. And we sat there with my wife, my best friend. We're watching this movie. Halfway through, my best friend leaves. He's done. <laughs> but I'm sitting there going, "This is just a bad movie. It's yeah. just a. It's so bad. The writing's terrible. The story's terrible. The acting's okay, but when you have all those other factors, it's hard to make it work. And so when I say it got us, because I remember the marketing was. Especially the conservatives, like, oh my God, look at it. it's the Obama movie. They say this racist line. Yeah. That line didn't come till an hour and a half in the movie. Mm -hmm. I had to sit through ninety minutes of crap to hear one line that didn't really matter. 
And the problem it, is, did they, just, put it in the tra- did they put that in the trailer? Yes. Okay, that's the problem. When it ends up in the trailer, it means it's meant to be seen. Thank you, guys. Uh, we got a $20 from the Ninja Bear. He said, Mary, you know what this place needs? A giant poster of Atlantic City. <laughs> LMAO. Also, yeah. another favorite part from Zoe Married an Axe Murderer is the dad goes off about the Pentaveret. Pentaveret? Uh, I do remember yeah, him going I remember off. That. I remember him going off like crazy about something. I didn't know. It was yeah. That. Oh, also, um, Moonfall in 2021. That was a couple mm. years ago. It's so bad, it's good. The moon is the bad guy. Really? The, yeah. The moon is evil. Yeah, I didn't watch it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, no. it's really bad. I, but I love all. I, I, you know, any Roland Emmerich disaster movie is going to get <laughs> my time and money. It, it will. <laughs> all right, guys. Let's. Uh, so, also, did you see this one? Kevin Spacey is going oh, yeah. to a. He's just going. He's just, he, you know, not convicted in a court of law. He's just going to keep living. That Tucker Carlson know, interview was I still have bizarre. no idea how to interpret the Tucker Carlson wasn't CGI he, interview. Wasn't he playing uh, this character He's from... Frank yeah. Underwood. Yeah, so, you Carlson. know, that's what we saw. It's still weird, though. Yeah, very weird. Yeah. I mean, and he th- he looked like he was in front of a green screen and they weren't actually in the room together. Yeah, that was pretty awkward. Yeah. Well, it's it's uh, it's those new 4K cameras, man. <laughs> they look they look so real. It doesn't look real anymore. Yeah. I well, think that was CG. I don't think that was real. I well, think I think that I think he was put in after the fact. Well, I always ask this, right? He, think about OJ. OJ went pretty hard even after he got acquitted. Yeah. It's like when you get away with stuff in a court of law, like what is there to oh. stop you? You got money, you got access, and you got people that get you out of trouble. We got so. a tw- we missed a twenty dollar one here from Olivia Claire. It says, "Dang it, Trudy, I can't stop it, so I'll use my super chat to humble brag. I got a job today. I was nervous nervous about it, and I get but I get to move soon. On that note, if anybody wants a crochet plush, I'm doing more commissions to make extra cash. Uh, if you're in the chat right now, you should link to your uh, if you have like an Etsy or something. You should link down there." Yes, and then yes, Shane H. Fantastic. Wilder is the one that sent us the, you missed the 20 from Olivia. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, guys. We got it. All Thank right. you. Uh, no, you so guys, it's such a nice chat you guys have here. We do. Yeah, you guys are yeah. friendly. Like Usually. You guys, like... Wait until later, though. Okay, here we go. I'm, I mean, I'm buckled in, so we can do it. Usually it's not bad. Usually the, the difference is their version of bad is they just ignore us completely and talk about whatever the hell they want. Like, they, <laughs> yeah. like, like as far as we're concerned, as they're concerned, we're not even <laughs> not We got here. another they're $20 from Pat the Plumber. He said, the peanut butter falcon, Brett, it's got Shia LaBeouf, John Bernthal, and wrestling. Good stuff. Ooh, I'll have to, Ooh. I'll have to check that. Ooh, uh, yes. A lot of people are mad that Iron Claw didn't get any Oscar, Oscar noms. nominations. Yeah, of course I not. It's, to, it's probably too, too masculine. Yeah. That's that's what it, I mean, too that, many guys muscle, which you would think they do more of it in Hollywood. Too many muscular guys. The Von Erichs had a particularly uh, yeah. sad life story. Yeah. Like that, that family is like, that's that's the definition of tragedy. Cursed. So. That's like the, the curse went on from one to the other. It's really sad. Another show that's say. out that I still haven't watched on wrestling is called Heels with Stephen Amell and it's yes. about wrestling and I, I, I again I have a lot of streaming services. I'm not buying stars. I'm not doing no, 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 that. I'm not. Do, I, I love the show Power, but that's on Hulu now, so I don't Power. have to go to. Was it Power Chapter Three? I haven't watched. I only watched the original. The first one, I yeah. didn't watch the. I I, lo- I like the Tommy character, but I didn't watch his, his version thing, of yeah, it. Yeah. But I, I love that actor, Joseph Sikora. He's he's, he's really perfect good. in that role. Yes, as like he's just there's this great. This is what I love about good Hollywood storytelling is that in that show, if you don't know, it's about a character named uh, uh, James St. Patrick. And basically, he plays a, a character who's a, a drug kingpin who's just desperate to not be a drug kingpin yeah. anymore. And he can't escape the life he's built for himself as uh, – the That's point the being, yeah. yeah. So, and in the show, he's constantly being laughed at by the Tommy character who loves the life he's living. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's this great dynamic between the two where one dreams of escape and the other one knows no life other than the one they live and doesn't want to. And wants to get bigger and yeah. bigger. He actually wants to take his buddy out at the yeah. end of the day. Yeah, it's, it's pretty. It's amazing. It's, and everyone should go. And uh, those first few seasons of that show are really, really good. Oh, so. man, I miss good storytelling. All right. Uh, okay, guys. This next thing, I, I'm really excited. Excited. So yesterday, I, I want to preface this. So yesterday, all we did was mention the fact that this was a thing that Ben uh, that Ben Shapiro did a, oh. a video with with yes. Tom McDonald, and we kind of laughed because it's it's a silly idea. But yeah. right now, the commentary on this is first of all, this is now number one on iTunes. Yep. Shut up. Yes. So look, we're gonna. It's watch only it. been out for a few hours. You it's see? called facts. Yep. You see, by the way, we talked about it earlier with the investing yep. in our content. 
Yep. There's a market for it. Yep. Let's it's wait there. until we see it. I do want to Until we decide out, like, whether it's based or cringe. I have well, made, it's still going to be cringe, <laughs> but it's our stuff, so it's cool. <laughs> I have made more than a few bones of saying that Tom McDonald is probably the business model you want. Like, if you can get, find his business model and make it work, he's an incredibly good businessman. He's incredible. He does social media really, really well. His videos, which he makes with very few people, are yes. very high. Like, his girlfriend does all of the, the cinematography. See, but that's, this is, this is, it's this is. It's high production the, value. But this is to the, the point I was making earlier we're so starved yeah it doesn't need to be 250 million dollars for people to watch it yeah that's the thing we're so we need it so much that like you can do this and in a couple hours you get millions of views okay he had a song in a couple years back called no lives matter that I yeah. maintain yeah. is one of the best songs I, I love that song and pretty, I don't like hot. his I like his non his apolitical music more. Church is a really really good song that has yeah. nothing to do. It's more it's about addiction. Has mm -hmm. nothing to do with politics. So let's go ahead and watch. Cool. Oh, we got a we got a twenty dollar one here from Crispy Lake Transport. Uh, I love the energy of the show today. Have a good weekend. I'll be driving the semi tomorrow. All right. Is that from go. Chris? Crispy leg. Crispy <laughs> legs. Hey man, drive safe, buddy. <laughs> All right. Let's go ahead and watch Crispy it then, legs. ladies and gentlemen. It. Here we go. This is uh, Facts by Tom McDonald. Hey. Yep. Oof. Ask, we asked you, Ben Shapiro's rap debut, based or cringe? I'm voting based. That's and I think it's because, That's you know, obviously it's ridiculous for Ben Shapiro to be in a rap video, but he's in on the joke. Yes. You That's know, like he leaned into the, the white boy rap. <laughs> like, also, the first, the first someone said verse, he ate and left no crumbs. <laughs> the, the first, the, the first verse sounds like he had a uh, Tom had a song called "Cancelled," and it, the first verse uh, is similar in structure to that song. Um, I, I I liked it. It was it was a good video too. Was, uh, uh, yeah, but one of the things is all his videos are super high yeah. production quality now, and he's a, he's a creative dude, and yeah. I and I love that aspect of it for dude, him. Like, I, it's, I, yeah. It was, it, I thought it was good. I thought it did exactly what it was supposed to do. Ben wasn't trying to be outside of himself too much. I mean, just him being a rapper was already something that was different mm -hmm. for him. But I think it goes back to what we're talking about. Like, that's how you you build the celebrity. He's also right? like, Tom Tom is not afraid to affect, like he has a song called People So Stupid, which is also <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. really, really funny. Like yeah. a lot of his stuff, it's like, I would go through like um, phases where I would listen to, to his stuff. It's, you know, you go and you, you go come back and, go and forth. Yeah, yeah. Two and forth. So, I mean, if, but, if anything, this leaves me like wanting more yeah. from Ben. Thank you guys. Ben like I wanted him to have another verse. Yeah, yeah. I thought I thought he was actually gonna have multiple verses. Yeah. Yeah. I, can you imagine them trying to direct Ben? Like, cause that, it's it, like the, so the thing of them standing together is clearly green screen because yeah. he's not there. Uh -huh. But the idea is like it's really funny if they're like, all right, now like look hard, right? Like, <laughs> and he's just your, like standing there in a hoodie. In your, in your dad's, in your dad's hoodie. Yeah. Like if, that's the only thing, Ben, I love, I love you, Ben. Well, no, I, I always, all my shirts are oversized. So I'm with Ben on the, on the dad's well, okay. hoodie. Okay. So, so it's, it's one thing to be oversized is the fact that his, everything else was fitted. <laughs> You can wear the oversized sweater if you have some oversized pants, but you can't oh, wear the no, skinny not me. jeans. I wear the, the I wear the I wear the skinny jeans and the oversized sweater. Really? Yes, I do. So does my do. so do my old girlfriend. I eat the, I, that. mm, <laughs> that's me. That's me. Uh, I knew you looked familiar. No. That's that. That is me. <laughs> I, if I shaved, I would. Look if you shave, I'd be like. Yeah. Sarah? So speaking of, it's so bad, it's good. Mm. This is the the most recent thing I watched. It's so bad, it's good. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. I liked it. I, th I like it. Uh, I also, thought it was great. Like the like I said, the he does like he has really high production value for his videos for how few people make his make his songs and stuff. You'd like be that. surprised. It's not um it's not as hard as you think yeah. to make it look good. Yeah. You just you get a decent camera, and real realistically, you get about a uh, <laughs> anywhere between a three four thousand dollar camera. I, my I'm money with, like Lizzo. My pockets are fat. Was good. My, I'm with yeah. Howie. Dog. Boy. It's a yarmulke, homie. No cap. No, no cap. Yeah. No, he should have been playing the violin. There, sh there should yes. have been violin in here. Everyone was hoping that, that he would be been, playing violin on that the track, would have been but fire that, that that'll yeah. just be for the next one yeah the next collab well it's this uh, is the, the collab we didn't know we needed it's um now it's it's taking number it's number one on itunes let's go all yeah. right well now i'm gonna download it to help it stay at number one <laughs> i didn't know it existed <laughs> cringe or cue to the day siaka you decide which one we, we have, we have a cringe, cringe, and cute cringe of the day and cute, so cringe is obviously what, what would you like to like see cringe. First. cute is we have uh viewers of the show send in their pets for us to see. oh well <laughs> i showed you guys earlier my puppy so i'm gonna go with and since i'm gonna have a baby soon i'm going with cute first all right we'll do, yes. uh, we'll do this first then all right let's look at a couple here uh this one here from john solis on twitter says uh this is dick richard <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, 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 King Charles. I love those dogs. Oh. I used to train yeah, dogs I for two years. Breed. So it's like, oh. That is amazing. Is, that is very that's the cutest tricolor. All right, let's do one more here. We'll do, we'll uh, do one more here. This one is uh, this is from oh. C on Twitter. This is Maisie. 
Oh, Maisie. Maisie. Little tortoise. Oh, my oh. It's like, let me up here. <laughs> <laughs> I love I love it. Amazing. All right. Okay. All right. Mary found this cringe of the day, so brace yourself. This some Taylor gentlemen. Swift cringe. Well, here we go. She lives cringy, doesn't she? Mm-hmm. Be a witness for something special, Miss Taylor Swift. Oh, my God. Uh, I'm going to ask Miss Mabel Marciano uh, to be my wife. <gasps> I got this special token of my love <laughs> and appreciation for you. I hate um, everything about this. Yep, it's cringe already. Wow. How is Taylor oh supposed God. to react in this situation? <laughs> I know. You know like, gonna, did you know that was... I didn't know that was going to happen at all. Yes. Wait for I the high like, five. You just like... High five. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is the <laughs> Shiver me timbers. Amazing. It's like the celebrity Whoa. version of a cabbie okay. who has people give birth in the back of their cab. Oh, my goodness. I hated that. Okay. Yeah, and she's like, oh, okay, um... You want me to sign anything? Uh, <laughs> like, I wasn't ready for that. And this is not the first time this has happened. I looked it up, and there are like, it's like seven different times this has happened where people go to her meet and greets and propose. Are you serious? It happens at her concerts too a lot, obviously. Okay, but what is a the meet deal and greet? with Taylor Swift? Like, I don't get it. I really don't. It's average. She's at best. inoffensive and mass appeal. That's What's what it the is. appeal? She looks like a, a tall 15 year old boy. <laughs> Like her with long hair. I'm like, Whoa. I'm like, is this the, Ooh. hey man, y'all can y fired. come at me if you want. That doesn't stop the facts of what you see on, you know, the tail of the tape. <laughs> like yeah. it doesn't, I, I'm like, it's not, I don't well, know. You're not, a, you're not a teenage white girl yeah. or a millennial white girl. So I don't I think you I haven't been for the last the 10 years, so I don't get how she's risen. <laughs> we'll have to, we'll have to since know. your transition. Yes. True. Yeah. <laughs> since then, it's, uh, I just, uh, uh, luckily the pills work. So oh, my yeah. voice could stay mm -hmm. low. Yeah. Uh, somebody's saying I missed a 20. Do you see that? I think there's one up there from the Undrip Taker. Do you see that one, Mary? Oh. Uh... I'm not sure. Says, uh, I object to this chat being dispar uh, being disparagingly mischaracterized as nice. <laughs> Someone tell this race swapped Mr. Clean we're truly terrible people. <laughs> Just kidding. Also, why no mention of the run as a Hawkeye, 38, oh. 387 yards in one game? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I didn't know we we're going to get into football part of my life, but we can. I actually had a thing today that I was I wanted to talk Who about. Who said that, by the way? It was uh, the, the Undertaker. Undertaker. Taker. Underp taker. Underp taker. <laughs> so uh, that's a great name because my wife and I start calling one of our dogs Derp because of the go. way she moves. So Underp Taker and you use an Undertaker. I'm a big wrestling fan. You, I may know you. I Dude, think you may you know me. Vince McMahon stuff that's been yeah, that's. Oof, I didn't want to talk yikes. about it because it's so gross. Yikes! I, yikes! Oh, I was like, that's why they pushed him out. Yeah. Well, hey, you got to go, man. Hit the I road, mean, Jack. I, I'm not gonna lie. I, I read the tweet. The, I, I looked at the supposed tweets, and I just don't buy that Vince McMahon doesn't know how to spell a couple of these words. Words and uh, like I we'll we'll have to wait and see, but it's the the stuff is gross. It's, yeah, it's the secondary thing. It's it's using the Doom popcorn and yes. to to and yeah, it's well, a whole thing. Good. It's not good. But, um, but I can get into a little, but about football. So yes. there was this. I was watching this video from Alex Clark, who's been on the show here. Uh, she was talking to Charlie Kirk about the conspiracy theory that the NFL is. Uh, is rigged, rigged yeah, it is. and that uh, the it's Super Bowl, just WWE. The, the yeah. Super Bowl is yeah. like that for the last three or four years. Every Super Bowl logo that has been revealed a year in advance of the game has been the colors of the teams that have ended up really? playing in the oh, Super I didn't Bowl know that year. Yeah. So you know that would be hilarious, honestly. If every pro, this would be the biggest like comeuppance for every pro wrestling fan who's had to deal with annoying sports fans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you know, it's not real, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? <laughs> neither, like and they're like, football. no shit, really. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like imagine one day, like then they just start flooding the board's like you know football's not real right yeah well they're you're really getting hit yeah just like wrestling you're really getting well, hit that's what they're saying they're like oh it's scripted not fi that'd be great well it, the, here's the script the script is uh well football especially in basketball you see it more in basketball because it's easier to control it's the refs yeah the ref mm -hmm. goes oh nope you did something bad mm -hmm. no i didn't sorry 15 yards sorry two points for the other guy so the refs mm -hmm. they their hands are in it too much that's the script in a way the individual players they have to play their butts off or you literally can get injured where you won't walk again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So for us on the field, no, it's not scripted. No, so outside what, of the plays. So what they're saying is for all the baseball fans in here, Angel <laughs> Hernandez is really the world's worst umpire on purpose. Yes. Because he's making sure that the World Series is running. They actually, he's paid off. Yes. They so, actually did yeah. this in an episode of the X-Files that I always talk about where uh, the cigarette smoking man talks about like rigging the 1980 Olympics, uh, the Mariclon Ice, so that yeah. we beat Russia. Mm. You know, because it was, uh, you know, we, we we send people to the moon. We beat Russia in the Olympics. It just all comes up gold for the U.S. when it needs to. 
rigged. I'm telling you, you'd be surprised how much money is behind this stuff. But uh, yeah, no, I used to I used to play a little ball back in the day and uh, high school kind of kind of uh, got my name out there in the uh, the national stage. Uh, the person mentioned that was actually a high school stat oh. where I, I, I carried the ball for 52 times and 397 yards Damn. In, in our you talk about things coming up. It was actually in our rivalry game homecoming. Oh, and I actually was homecoming king at halftime. So it was like, a whole, it was a whole, yeah. Damn, bro. I, yeah, it wasn't a whole, yeah, it sounds fake, Core but it memory. actually happened. Yeah, Core memory. I mean, you know, come on. I, I helped destroy New Trier. That's, that was our shirts. So. That's crazy. Yeah, and then, yeah, and then so I was able to play. you played your biggest rivals on homecoming? Yeah, on homecoming, which we moved it to our senior year because they had some random team that sucked. Yeah. And we're like, what are you doing? Yeah. So we moved it to that game and. And yeah, those that was yeah, that was that was a different lifetime when my knees and and Achilles worked properly. So yeah, <laughs> so it was a different time. A different time. Right. Different time. Speaking of back when you, I was that white girl. There, yes. <laughs> that white like, we looked girl. for pictures of this. And yeah. it just, that's, it didn't like look he, the same. Yeah, it didn't look the same. White. All right, yeah. let's let's talk about you and let's talk about your journey because you yeah. have been an actor for how long? Uh, since oh four. Well, in Hollywood since oh four, I started acting in college in like two thousand two thousand one. Okay. Yeah. So you got into acting, or did you always live like? Did you live in California at the time? No, no. I grew up in Evanston, Illinois, which is you were like born in Rochester. Right? Yeah, I was born in yeah. upstate New York, Rochester. I grew up in uh, Chicago and in Evanston, and then I went to school at University of Iowa, and then moved out to uh, Hollywood in oh four. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so I was I was rewatching because when I was preparing for this episode, I rewatched your Prager U video. Oh yeah. When you called, you said that Hollywood is like the most racist place. Yeah. 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 Hollywood. Honestly, what I've learned and uh, Hollywood and, and mostly the liberal cities are some of the most racist places that I've ever been. Um, and the only reason why I found out about that was I started doing this job for Crest Oral B where I travel around to conventions and we work conventions and, you know, smiling mm -hmm. and all that good stuff. And a lot of the people I worked with were from conservative state, small towns. So I started to see more direct contrast that wasn't in, on the screens and it wasn't maybe one person I knew that moved away. I started seeing a huge comparison and, and a huge contrast. And I was like, wait a second. Oh my goodness. I mean, in Chicago alone, there are two different girls I dated, at, at, um, not at the same time. Uh, but, <laughs> Thank goodness. Uh, yes, right. Uh, there was this one Italian girl was like, my grandmother told me to break up with you because this is in Chicago, because you know, what if your grandpa, you know, your grandfather finds out like, it's maybe a bad thing. She was uh, Italian. The Korean girl would never introduce me to her mom, her mom and dad because, well, she didn't know what they were going to do. And uh, one girl in college even said her, her dad was like, don't ever bring home a black guy. So this is like a lot of things I was finding out in the so-called liberal, um, you know, places that were supposed to be inclusive and all that good stuff. But when I sat there and then I get into Hollywood and I had from agents and managers saying, you know, you should think about kind of get thugging it up more. I'm like, what? Like you see how I am, yeah. and, and and not saying. Do they as mean act, like in order to be marketable? You, to get more roles earlier on, so the earlier. I would say stuff like now like they've moved away from that. Yeah, like yeah. almost, almost un like to the point where you know. It's like it. look, I can play a bag. I, 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 I mentioned the other day. I said I, I use this example all the time that in the 2018 Predator movie, yeah. Sterling K. Brown gets to play yeah. like an asshole, and you can tell that he's been waiting to play, to play this an role asshole. again yeah, yeah. For, for ages because <laughs> yeah. he's just not. He wasn't getting those roles, yeah, right? Yeah, like yeah. he played um he played a, a detective for like five episodes of Person of Interest, and I loved him in that show where he's like suspected to be like a dirty cop, yeah. but he ends up not being. But then he went and did This Is Us which is, uh, you know, make everybody bath, cry. Like, bathtub television, yes, as they yeah. call it, <laughs> to, to, to make you cry. I like that. Um, and so, you know, he gets to do this role where he gets to actually lean into being a bad guy. And every actor in the past would tell you that they love to play well, bad guys. It's not, it's not necessarily a bad guy to ask me to do. It was thug. So very specific specifically type. thug. Yeah. Yes, very specifically a thug character. Then I'll never forget, there's two or two different instances. I go into a commercial audition. One was for Coors Light. And it was, you know, a bunch of black folks because that's where Coors Light was trying to direct it to. And it was so sad because this is how it was written. But the casting director's like, we do something. And, he, and we did it the first time. He goes, and guys, and he and the white dude, and he kind of goes, so if you could hip hop it up a bit. <laughs> and they're like sitting there going. <laughs> and then and then the second one I went into everyone dies of cringe no every yeah, everyone was like yo and he's like I know that's what's written that's how the, they wrote it oh. for me to say it then the other side was there was wow. one where it was uh, they needed Africans right and they picked me because my name you know Siaka Massacre I'm like oh okay I'm gonna show up I show up and now description didn't have anything about Lauren Kloss or anything like that <laughs> I show okay. up I'm seeing people dressed in like village outfits with like and I'm just like what 
I'm, I'm wearing jeans and a t-shirt. I was like, you just need an African. I'm an African. <laughs> I go in and it's this whole scene that they're setting up and there's two guys next to me who are in like Lauren cloths. I'm, bi- I'm pretty much in a jeans and my shirt's <laughs> off. And they're like, so can you kind of do, okay, what we want to do, think about how like in Swahili they do the clicks, just make it up and do that. I was like, what the? What had, year was this? This was, uh, wow, this was probably like uh, 2010 or, or they, they were trying to get you to do like a tongue click. Yeah, they were like, do ding, 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 all that. Yeah, and they had, <laughs> they had the other two guys what? were doing it, and I was just kind of like, ooh. And then I, I remember calling my agent. I go, don't ever send me out on shit like that again. Okay, I didn't hear anything about this in your prager you video oh, we didn't you didn't go time. into the details yeah, like that time. but um you also said like later on there was sort of this push for you to identify as a victim and a lot of people oh, would yeah. make racist comments about white people around you oh my goodness kind there of was... expecting you to laugh along yes yeah all the time i mean it was it was one of those things that and this that one specific incident happened um it was during COVID. Mm-hmm. And I was I was on this Zoom because a bunch of actors and I got together to still do scenes together, keep our skills up. And this one guy, or this one girl, black girl, she was talking about something and working with working on set and with this white guy. And two other people were from the Middle East. One was Israeli, one was Iranian. So like, I'll, I mean, they're te- you know they're maybe tan at the best, but you could be like, hey, you're a white dude. And she's like talking, talking. She goes, yeah, I don't really hang out with black, with white people like that. I'm like, ugh. And she did that. And I'm just like, and I'm looking down because I'm like, I can't believe she just said this because I just, I was looking over my lines. Then I hear people start cackling like this is the funniest thing they ever heard. And I just sat back and I'm like, I, it was 2020. I had been sick of, I voted for Trump in 2016 and I was hearing all the crap everyone was saying for, you know, at this point, four years. And, and I hit a point where it was just so disgusting to me. I was done with them because I, I've heard that before. White people's this, they're, you know, white people that, ha, 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 white people are corny. I'm just like, y'all need to stop because, you know, as soon as they said black people X, Y, Z, even if it's true, you lose your shit. And we sat there and watched them over and over. I'm listening to them. Mm-hmm. That was literally the last time that I actually hung out with them because I'm like, I can't be a part of this stuff anymore. And we see for me, I guess I saw where it was leading to. And now we see it. I, I had friends, roommates in the last five years that left L.A. because their agents told them, you're white. We can't cast you. Wow. You won't work here. I know you've been here for 12, 13 years of your adult life, but you're done. Sorry. So That's Hollywood Hollywood is just not capable of not being racist. Yeah. All they did was flip the script. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that they're, they're not capable of doing it because what they do. I'll tell you how crazy it is. I was uh, in an acting class at a casting office, very big one. And she was telling us how, well, now Hollywood's big push. It, this was like seven years ago. Hollywood's big push seven years ago was uh, amputees. Mm-hmm. So you got to be a real amputee to get the work now. Yeah. Or they were looking for little people and they need real little, like it was, it was whatever the not thing. Not anymore, because now we're not even going to get that. Exactly. Snow. Well, actually, no, now we are going to get the snow. Yeah, they're switching. They're, they're switching, switching back. Around. Yeah. But, but it, the whole point was, it's like, whatever the hot thing culturally, they felt like we got to hit on. Like if it's somebody who's a special need, we got to get a real special need person. We got to get yeah. a real trans. Now, right now we see with trans, we got to get a real trans person. Would you say that trans is like the hot thing yes. now that they're yes. trying to include? Yeah. yeah. Which I had a friend of mine, he was tripping because, uh, uh, a mutual friend it was on this show the 4400 remake that did another remake oh. yeah i know oh guys and- <laughs> yeah. i'm gonna i'm gonna decide whatever you do whatever you do do not watch the remake of the 4400 no. first oh. of all the the original 4400 so is a classic so good the remake i saw one episode and I wanted to vomit and jump off a bridge. Wow, was that bad? It was. It was bad. Yeah, I didn't even touch it. No, it's it's bad. But they cast a a chick as a dude, because sometimes I don't know their their phrasing, so I'll just a say woman who a, identifies as as yeah, a man. It, yeah. So they they cast that, and my other buddy called up. He's like, yeah, he's on the show, and his buddy, our our mutual friend, like posted about it as being like a strong move. And I'm like, why? So screw all the guys who've been hustling trying to get that part, then, huh? Because it was it was cute. And that and my butt and our mutual friends on the show, he's been busting his ass, too. And I'm like, I know for a fact if some black, uh, some black chick who's been pretending to be a woman goes on there as that he wouldn't be happy about it. But because he's on the other side yeah. of the fence and he can virtue signal and go, look, I'm a good guy. I'm an ally. They're playing the same game. But at the end of the day, it's all discrimination. It's all based in some type of racism, sexism. Big, it, it's it's so sick out there, guys. It, it, it's just it's sick. And I'm happy that this is growing because. I'm sick and tired of it. 
has the so has the tone that Hollywood took as it as you watched it happen, right? Mm-hmm. Because it was a little bit different in 04 and yeah. it got progressively worse and worse. Yeah, yeah. Has that hurt your passion for the actual profession of acting? No. No, I, because um I started it's funny, I was known as a, a dramatic actor in twenty twenty and before. And since all this stuff happened, we started doing sketches with my group, uh, What yeah. the Fact, I was telling you about, and then uh, Babylon B. So now I'm known as a comedic actor. But since it's like my passion and my love, I've seen how it can be put in the, now in a different sense that I thought I had to wait to kind of do the dramatic stuff again. No, I can do the, the humorous part of it and still perform and still go out there and do that. So I think there's so much more in it that I, it really taught me I don't need Hollywood in order to hit this, this thing that I really love. And that's what I thought. I really thought I had to stay there in times when I should have left. I really thought the only way it was going to be success if, if I was working on a Hollywood, you know, TV show or whatever. I'm starting to see that's not the case, you know. So that it, 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 if anything, it helped me kind of get away. That's what kind of that's what Eric July has been talking about. He yeah. said you need to stop looking f- to these industries for legitimacy. Yep. You need to stop pretending like they're the ones that are the arbiters of what's cool or what matters. They're not because if you can do it yourself, why would? First of all, you're going to own your own material. Yep. You're going to have way more control over what you do. Why look to people that hate you for uh, approval on the stuff you're making? Right? Well, and and the other side is too. The, the person like Eric Jalab, that's a great example to bring that up. Um, you know, he did this comic book, Isom, and it went nuts mm-hmm. in the first like two weeks. It was crazy. Like, I think almost two million dollars. All, all of his campaigns have cracked a million. Yeah. It, it, I mean, it blow. It, I remember talking to uh, Dallas Sonia of uh, Daily Wire. And, Dal- I, right? and I told Dallas, I go, you need to produce that into a movie now. Like, that's that's the new comic book movies we can make because that's good stuff. Look yeah. at what he's doing. Um, but what you'll find out, like you're saying, you don't need Hollywood. I'll tell you a few reasons why they don't know what they're doing like that. Yes, they have the expertise in the makeup artists and then the CGI and then knowing how to get numbers together and, and get in the pockets, but the creativity, they don't really know what they're doing. They're not really there in that sense because they've compromised too much for that. So when you're out there doing your own thing, don't use that as a comparison because they live on fear. They're doing things out of fear. I know someone who's was a, a um, he's a, a producer. He did the um, showrunner who that's the guy who runs the show yeah. for a television show. He showrunner of I don't want to say the name because you look it up, but it was a major cultural television show. Two shows, one was spun off the other. That was in the early two thousands. You'll do what you got to do with that. Mm-hmm. Um, so much, and, and I remember watching it. And when I finally met him and we got close and became friends, when stuff started happening, he told me he was a conservative. I'm like, oh why don't you speak up? He goes, I'll never work again. And I thought to myself, what was the point of getting up to here if you can't say what you want to say? Yeah. And you can't defend a friend of his that he couldn't touch because, oh, he'd lose his career. Hmm. But that's Hollywood. They're so afraid to try that they won't do anything and they'll let people like get their heads chopped off because, you know, uh, when it comes to socially. Because they're off, basically, off they're always looking for the next paycheck because they're, they're, they work by project. They're yes. not hourly workers. They're not salary workers. So they're constantly in fear of not working. Exactly. Anymore. And if you're in constant fear, the, the people running and pulling the strings can decide how it moves. That's why we have yeah. terrible content right now on the Hollywood yeah. side. So you're, os- you're associating yourself with a whole different sphere now. Like yeah. you've shifted what kind of projects you're doing. But why are you still in L.A.? Well, uh, there's a few different reasons. In 22, well, first I met I met my wife there, and and uh, you know it, we started getting closer. Uh, I ran for office for state assembly in 22. Um, I didn't win, uh, as you can tell. But mm-hmm. <laughs> then uh, afterwards, I actually um, what, what what I learned from running for office is that that whole city is not blue. It's not. Mm-hmm. It's it's more people are like minded in what we want and we think than we understand. The problem is we don't get our message to them. And the other side, like the industries we wait to do the right thing, yeah. they're not going to show our message. When I was walking the streets, ninety five percent of the people, my own neighborhood, said if you were a Democrat, I would have kicked you out. In North Hollywood, California, right? So I, I, then I became vice chair of uh, LA County GOP. So mixture of that was like, look. There's something here that I feel like God has me here to do, which I believe is to show, to be there for people as, as from a political standpoint, to show you can be dynamic, you can be an artist, you can be a conservative, you can love God, and it's okay. So I feel like that's part of the reason why I'm still in LA right now. I don't know where we'll be in the long run, but I know right now that's where I need to be, and there's just so much. I've seen even with what happened with uh, you know on, on November 30th, the love and support from the community that I stayed around it's important. People need to see that there as just as much as they have it here. 
you know, mm-hmm. so that's part of the reason why I kind of still hang out in L.A. for now. Yeah, I've just been thinking about how a mass exodus from L.A. might be necessary to create an actual geographical pull. It, it definitely does help. And, and I also think that it helps to shift the voting patterns of people there. Because now there's no one else to use as an excuse. Well, I just mean culturally as well. Yeah, well, that's if there's a, the right polarity. Competition will make Hollywood yes. stronger. Competition will make this side of the aisle stronger yeah, as it's, well. It's like AEW. Yes, yeah. I, I, I gave you a little reference. That's a that's a, a wrestling, wrestling reference. reference. <laughs> okay. Well, it's, it's it's like WWF and WCW yes. back in the nineties. Yeah, Monday right? Night uh, Wars. Technology bolsters creativity yes. and uh, mm-hmm. allows you to flourish. Whereas once WCW went under, WWE Became, arguably the, pro- the product got really really bad yes. for a period of time. Yes, and so that's I think you know to have because like, part of me again is watching what Daily Wire is doing, Babylon B is doing, what you guys are doing here. I, those are like the those are the building blocks, right? I think there's still so much, so many of us in Hollywood that we can get to come out to these places and help build up even more, but they need to, there's a, there's a big thing. People need to mm-hmm. see others do it yeah. before they can feel brave enough to even speak like, like, Oh, I support it. They need to see it. I want to be there for that. I want to be like, it's okay. Get out there. And, yeah. and we saw that in the Beverly Hills rallies and Beverly Hills in 2020 with Trump rallies from June to election. It, by the time it was election, there were 10,000 people in Beverly Hills in the streets, live band, a plane flying over with, with a, a sign that says Vietnamese for Trump, Dennis Prager dancing with a bunch of Israelis. <laughs> We're doing dance parties in the middle of the street of Santa Monica Boulevard. I sat there and go, it's, this, isn't, this place isn't what they told us. The, most of these people just don't know like what to do. Most of us don't know what to do when it's like we want it different. We just think, oh, this is what it is. No, we can change it. Just by getting 50% of conservatives to vote in every election, we would change major cities like that. Just that alone. Just that number alone. And uh, you're actually going through something else entirely right now. <laughs> yeah. Because after the... So, uh, so we were at the Lady Ballers premiere. We which not, I missed you. Yeah, I was we, like... Uh, did I you meet Brett picture. there? No. Okay, we didn't meet each other no. while we were at the Lady Ballers premiere. I, but I, did, I did compliment him on having the best outfit. Yes, yes he did. Best yes. dress. <laughs> I, I was clean, y'all. I was and, clean. Go uh, look at pictures. And directly after the Lady Ballers premiere, we saw this story that one of the actors went home to L.A. and was immediately arrested for charges from J6, That's and me. that is you. That is so me. what's the status on that? Well, the status... And what really happened? Like, how did you... What happened, and, like, how did you feel when that happened? I was pissed. What was the sequence of events? <laughs> like, take me through the story. So, you know, um, well, it starts from... I went to J6. I didn't do anything violent or wrong or anything. I recorded most of the stuff I did do. Um, but it started on June 10th of 2021, mm-hmm. where they raided my house. So they raided my house 5.45 in the morning. I got my godsons, three and six there. I have uh, uh, my best friends there, two other roommates. They came in guns drawn. They were ready to rock, much like I'm sure Tim, when, they, when they guys, you guys got swatted, swatted coming in with the guns. Mm-hmm. You know, I opened the door and I showed you a picture of my dog, Ginger. And all I could say at the time was, please don't shoot my dog because they turn at you right away. Whew, guns right in your face. FBI, put your hands up. So they raided me. They took my laptop, took took my phone, took my MAGA hats. <laughs> took wow. My, yeah, they were, they were very, they were trying to uh, definitely paint a narrative. So that happened. I didn't get arrested or charged at the time. I was I filed a complaint against the FBI. It violated my Fourth Amendment right. That claim then, or that that um, uh, that filing took about two years before it went to the Ninth Circuit Court, and they uh, they threw it out or they yeah, dismissed it and saying. It's a bunch of garbage. Like I was supposed to go to the executive branch and file my complaint, which is not how it works. But so that goes down. I file another suit against them in September. I'm doing interviews, talking about this process and everything that went on. Uh, we go to Lady Ballers. It was amazing. It was, it was actually that summer was the first movie I've been a part of since I basically been canceled from Hollywood. So it was amazing to be a part of that type of production again after turning away from what I was used to doing. We were flying back, and I was there with Amber Coyle, who who played um, who played the uh, the uh, uh, the individual that uh, the shocked the t- yeah, yeah she tasered uh, uh, Jeremy, and so <laughs> Amber Amber was flying back with us. Flew back as I'm getting off the the plane, and uh, Amber and my wife are walking first, and they get off, and I'm coming out, and I look over, and as I'm walking, I see there were. There, there was this woman, this white woman who was standing here kind of looking up and there was a few other people with cops standing behind the airport police. And I'm just like, it just felt funny, you know? Mm-hmm. Soon as I stepped on the tarmac before I could get to my wife, 
shoot, she jumps in front of me. Siak Masco, the FBI, can you come with us, please? Two guys, boom, jumped on either side of me, grabbed me. I'm, I'm like, whoa, whoa, what's going on? They're like, you're, you're under arrest. You know why? I was like, no, no, no. Why am I, Why are you arresting me? He goes, you know why? I go, you need to tell me what you're arresting me for. He goes, it had to do with January 6th. I was like, I didn't do anything on January 6th. The other guy goes, stop talking about it. I go, he brought it up. <laughs> so, so then, you know, uh, uh, wow. they tell me, this is a relation to that. They take my stuff, give it to Charlotte, say you're going to go spend a night in jail. We're taking you in, and you got to go to a hearing tomorrow, bond hearing the next day. They take me in as I'm driving in. I'm I'm just I'm pissed. I'm like you you, you guys know you didn't have to do it like this. You could have called me. I would have came in. I would have turned myself in like they do many people on many occasions, even if it's a higher crime than what I was eventually charged with, which are four misdemeanors. Um. And I'm just like taking a mugshot of Trump. Pretty much. Seriously. (laughs) That's pretty much like how it was going down. Like that's what they could have done. They could have called me. They know my lawyer because I, we sued him twice. So they know who my lawyer is for them to call him. But Mm -hmm. now they wanted to put a show and make it, make it a big deal. So I'm talking to him and I'll never forget. The guy says this, he goes, uh, after I'm saying it over and over, I'm like, you guys are just put on a big show, just like your raid, just like he did after the raid, it was all over the papers about Netflix actor raided this, that, and the other. So I know what you're doing this for is for a show. And he turns to me, he goes, would you have really come in if we called? I go, bro, my wife is about to have a baby. I've lived in the same house for almost nine years. I'm I'm LAGOP vice chair. I know I didn't do anything wrong. Why the hell would I run anywhere? It's the dumbest thing ever. Yeah. That's just dumb. Right. And, um, and, and he's like, oh, well, we didn't want to watch you prepared. I'm like, oh, that's it. Yeah. He didn't wait. They want to shock and awe. That's what they want to do. And make an example out of you, which yes. is why I believe they used the timing of the premiere. Yes, exactly. To get more attention in but the media. About it's, like when it. they, it's like when Roger Stone got raided. Yes. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. But I'm going to use this to turn it around. And, and in that moment, you know, uh, when I got into the in, into when they took me to the jail, I started talking about God. You know, I've said in a lot of interviews, God saved my life from uh, a hopeless drunk to, you know, someone that now is about to have, is a family man about to have his first child. And God has been everywhere in that. So I started talking to these guys about God. And I asked them, I'm like, man, I've just seen it work. Have it, you know, have, are you guys religious? And the, the woman was like, no. And the guy was like, oh, I'm a Catholic. And I'm like, so are you like uh, most Catholics or have you read the Bible? He's like, oh, come on, man. I go, all right, well, have you read the Bible? He goes, no. I'm like, well, there you go. You know, so I'm kind of joking with him a little bit. And I'm giving him some verses. They lock me, and then I go, I get changed into the orange jumpsuit. I go into the back, and I do a little workout because I'm you know, anxious. And then I get on my knees, and I start doing the Lord's Prayer over and over. And the jailer comes in. She's like, hey, do you want a book to read? I was like, if you had the Bible, that'd be great. She's like, I don't know, but I'll look. She comes back with the Bible. Fortunate enough, I end up reading, uh, uh, reading the Bible that night, fall asleep within my arms. The next morning, they come and pick me up at 7 a.m., take me to the marshals because I got to get processed. Do all that stuff. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm still uh, cuffed up and basically spending all the time with them shackled from my wrist to around my waist to my ankles. So I look like Hannibal Lecter there without the mouthpieces shuffling through and all for four misdemeanors. No violence at all, but all four misdemeanors, disorderly process crimes, basically. And I'm sitting there in this space with guys who are in prison or who are in jail and supposed to be there for uh, running guns running numbers. One guy was in there for 18 years for stabbing somebody and he was trying to get out, but he just stabbed, stabbed another guy the year before. So he's like, he didn't know if he was gonna get out. And so then I am, uh, I go into, you know, I'm in the, the jail to put me in a jail cell by myself. Then they put me into where I was gonna meet with uh, my lawyer, but my lawyer didn't know to be there at the time because we called him up, he took a red eye from Florida. So I'm talking to the judge, uh, the judge's clerk to find out about me and what kind of numbers they can use. Uh, a, a public defender comes on. I go, no, 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 we're fine. We're fine. I got somebody. He was like, all right, I'll come back. Then I'm just sitting there chilling and I knock on the door. I'm like, hey, can uh, I was like, can I get out? The guy's like, hey, you know, um, we're busy. We'll be back. So I'm just kind of sitting there tired. You don't sleep well in jail. And all of a sudden my lawyer comes busting in. He's like, hey, I made it. You know, I'm like, oh, Larry. And I'm kind of like almost crying because like, I didn't think I would see you till about two o'clock. Right. And this is like 11 o'clock. He says, we got you. I got an L.A. lawyer for you. We'll, we'll get you out today. He leaves. I fall on my knees. And I don't know if you guys know the Brandon Lake song, Gratitude. And the line's like, so I throw up my hands and I praise you again and again because all I have, all I have is a hallelujah. And, um, and so that's all I could do, you know, because the song says it. It says it in the Bible. Praise him whenever you can. So I fall on my knees and with the chains, you know, trying to hold up and, and I'm praising him. And 
then I then they they're getting ready to take us over to the courthouse. And I'm wearing this sweater that has a uh, cross that says Jesus saves on the back. And as I'm going, there's four other guys behind me. And it was that one dude who was there 18 years, six foot, six, two white guy, tatted from the neck down. He looked like the casting of the white supremacist in any prison movie. Mm -hmm. Right. I was like, we'd be like, we could shave your head. You know, that's <laughs> about it. He's tatted everywhere. And as I'm walking, I hear him going, nice shirt, man. I go, oh, yeah. Uh, you know, man, Jesus saved my life. Da -da 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 -da. We start talking about God. We start talking about God to the elevator. The other guy, this other guy starts chiming, uh, chiming in. We get into the uh, vans. We're talking about God. Then we go start talking about uh, novels, Lord of the Rings novels, uh, Count of Monte Cristo. We start talking about all this stuff. Uh, two other guys just kind of sat there quiet. The other three guys, we were talking. Then we go to the back, and most people don't know this in the court, in a courthouse. When people are coming from the back, they're coming from a holding cell back there. They're not just sitting in the back room hanging out. There's actually a holding cell. So when we went there, we're walking and they take you through the court first, the courtroom first. So as I'm going through the courtroom, you know, I'm looking, I'm only expecting to see my wife and the lawyer. And I look over and I see it's like 15 people are there, half of which are from my church. My church from downtown LA is about an hour away. This is a Friday evening. So these people showed up to be there for me. And I'm just like, the pastor that married us is right there. And I, I don't even see my wife because I just see all these people. I'm just like, whoa, what's going on? So we go back to the back and we're in there. We're still talking about stuff. And I'm like, tell him, yeah, I'm going to have a baby this year, this, that, and the other. We're talking about, uh, still talking about the Lord. And that big dude taps me. He goes, hey, can you pray for us? I was like, sure. You know, why not? So I ended up praying for everyone in there, including myself. And, you know, I, I, one of the main things I remember was like, regardless of if we're released today or we're locked up in here longer, we know that Jesus has our back, period. And so then, you know, after that, people start going out. The first guy goes out, comes back. He's like, ah, oh, she's a bitch. She's, she's terrible. She's not, she's not reasonable. Next guy goes, yeah, she's terrible. Not reasonable. Third, fourth guy, everyone. And they're like, I'm going, they're like, Hey man, good luck, man. Good luck. Everyone's <laughs> like, hope you get out. And I'm like, yeah, me too. But I've just heard she's terrible. Like right? five, seven mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So I walk out and guys like, <sighs> I just gotta be a movie just cause it played like one in this way. It just blew my mind. I come out shuffling. And everyone there stands up. Boom. We're here for you. I remember, I remember seeing my, my pastor he buttoned up like we're going to battle with you. I'm walking over. My wife's in this all black dress with her baby bump sticking out. And she has her cross that her grand or her godmother gave her with my ring sitting on it. And she's holding her Bible. And she walks around the side to sit on the bench. And I'm just shuffling through like keep it together. And, you know, give each other a kiss. Stand there. And, and go through the whole process. The judge and the DA were kind of surprised that so much was happening for misdemeanors. She couldn't really understand. She was like, wait, these are misdemeanors? Okay, and the, the DA's like, uh, we're just gonna go with what the pretrial services normally does. They, you could tell it wasn't really like we got them. It was more like mm -hmm. what's going on for this, right? Mm -hmm. So the judge uh, allowed me to leave that night. I go, I leave, and this is the part I always gotta tell this guy, say like what they did to me just gave me a platform to talk about the Lord. And, and what happened was, he was with me that whole time. And even when I thought I was done, because when we left, I was supposed to sign a piece of paper. And so was the DA. I didn't know that. And by doing that, since that didn't happen, I would have been stuck in jail that whole weekend. So the DA had left a friend of ours who worked security at the church. And she named her little sports car after me. <laughs> she takes off to go find this DA, finds him in the parking structure on his phone about to leave. She's like, we need you to come back. Yeah brings him back. Mind you, I'm gone at this point. I'm thinking I'm free. It's good. I got to go get processed out, but I'm done. So she gets him back. The county cl uh, clerk was like, look, I got to leave. People are like, we'll give you a ride home. So people are still working to make sure God's still working through them to get him to sign it. I'm just chilling. I'm like, okay, let's go. I'll hurry up and get out. I get processed. They get that done. Then they let me, they let me out. I, I go through, I had to get transport over to the marshal's off back to the marshal's building. I get done. They're just like, you know, all right, bye. And I, I'm leaving. And in the big building, it was just my wife and my lawyer. And I walk up to her, give her a hug and kiss. I give him, you know, some love. We go outside of the building and everyone was there. We started to come in from different directions. A car pulled up front, boom, three, four people come this way, four people come this way. And we do this big hug outside of it. It, it, it was as, as frustrating and as upsetting as that was the, 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 the glory and, and the love that was coming out behind that. That, I mean, there's been other moments, but that was like, no one can ever tell me God isn't real. Nobody, no, I saw it. I felt it. I lived it. The walls came down. So, so how is here. the, how is the case looking right now? 
Uh, you know, the case is looking... Can you can you talk about it? Yeah, I can talk about the case. Okay, so they gave they charged me with four misdemeanors, um, knowingly trespassing uh, a restricted area and the Capitol, uh, um, disorderly conduct in the restricted, disorderly conduct in the Capitol, and parading in the Capitol. Parading. Parading. <laughs> okay. I had no flags, by the way, yeah. and I wasn't chanting a bunch of anything. And I stood in the Capitol for 71 seconds going like this and turned to left. So I, I've, been, I've been in parades. Yeah. I know they last longer than that. <laughs> mm -hmm. So they, they, those are all misdemeanors. Um, I pled not guilty because I have the footage and I want to fight this thing tooth and nail. Um, what's looking good is the fact that um, other individuals that, um, that have had this type of uh, the same four, mm -hmm. their sentences haven't been as crazy as some of the other, like the grandma who's gone to jail for six months. Um, so there's hope in that. But I do believe then, you know, you have other things people, you know, wait out till Trump comes in or all that stuff. But I do believe that we're on the right side of this. So from just that alone, I don't know if the political will is there like it was two years ago. Like yeah. if I was arrested two years ago, I probably would have taken a deal and just been done because there was no the support wasn't there. Yeah. That next day when I got out and I over the look, I saw uh, Jeremy Boring wrote something on Twitter support. Uh, Seth Dillon had a big. A post I want uh, Gina Carano, sweetest shout out Gina Carano, one of the sweetest human beings for real that you'll ever meet. Um, uh, you know, you had you had people, Rob Schneider, all these people that I've met and and we were hanging out at this one time. They came together to support. Then you had something that I saw on how we can actually fight this battle against this narrative battle. As soon as it happened, instead of waiting two days before we reported on it, the post millennial that f the f 24 hours later reported on it, boom. Epoch Times reported on it, boom. Then you had Daily Wire reported on it. Then you had our sides reporting everywhere, OC Register, all this stuff started reporting on it. So two days later, when uh, LA Times and uh, what was the, Newsweek picked it up, guess where they were pulling the story from? Our media. Yeah. Instead of creating whatever they wanted to, they had to pull from there. So even Newsweek had to put my comment in there that I did with Red State about, it's a crazy time, but we know with God's uh, support, we can get through it. Newsweek had to say, God, mm -hmm. here we go. So it were, uh, to me, I'm going to use this in a way to, get, to glorify God as much as possible. And so what, you know, seeing that we came around each other in order to start to defend this one person, hopefully as an example, I mean, Jeremy from the quartering did his thing about it. The black, uh, uh, a black conservative perspective, Greg uh, Foreman did something about it. And just having no stories out there in that way. Yes, it helped me get support and funds to, to, to fight this thing, but it showed me from a media standpoint, we can win if we jump on it first. We don't wait till they say something and then try to defend yeah. why it isn't. Tell what we think it is first. They, they're lazy. They're lazy. Didn't know, LA Times didn't call me. Yeah. Newsweek didn't reach out to me. Why not? You had, to, you had 48 hours to, you didn't do anything. Said they pulled from our stuff. That's what we need to do. We see somebody get in trouble, we jump on and defend them, you know, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, it looks like it was planned to make an example out of you, almost a humiliation ritual, yeah. but really with the timing of all of it, it just looks like God's providence in action. Oh, well, and I told you earlier, they actually, the, um, the, the warrant for my arrest was issued on November 15th. So they waited two weeks. Mm -hmm. Why'd they wait two weeks? For the last two years, I've been on a list every time I fly, I get fully padded down. I have to wait at the front desk. I can't check in beforehand. They check all through all my stuff. I go to the gate and they do that again. Thankfully, we were able to get you here. Yeah. Oh, I, no, I, I'll get here. I just have to go through some doctor's checkups yeah. first every time. So, yeah. <laughs> so, so you know, they've been Invasive doing that. Searches. So they, they know that I've been traveling. They right. knew I was traveling then. Right. So they let this person that after a warrant was issued for his arrest travel to another state mm -hmm. and then return. Yeah. So it was all about the show. It wasn't it's about not the like criminal. they're dumb and they don't know that. They, yeah. they have my stuff still. So, you know, they're tracking. I know they've been tracking me. Yeah. I didn't. I've never hide and hid that. I talk about it when I've done interviews to go. I know they're watching. I know they're listening. How you guys doing? Mm -hmm. Um so the fact that they the moved feds in are literally way. watching yeah yeah the I like the idea well that's that had nothing to do with me at this point that's something that's, that you yeah, guys that's, <laughs> i like the idea that there is a fed somewhere whose job we both is have to assigned watch fed. yes yeah. so i i i post many a memes about <laughs> who my particular fed is i think they have a crush on me personally really? they like my memes they're obsessed really? it's yeah. like why are you so obsessed with me exactly yeah. be like it'd be like no you can't date me yeah, uh, yeah no. <laughs> exactly. all right let's we're, we're gonna have our fingers crossed for you man Thank it you, looks man. like things are looking up though yeah things are i mean you know look um 
with the support we have and the funds that we've raised so far and, and the more that keeps coming mm -hmm. in, I thank you all who uh, help out. If you want to go to defendsiaka.com. All yeah. of his social media links are in the description nice. as well as the Legal Defense Fund is in the description. Oh, perfect. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, with all that, and then we have, again, the will is going away. That 1512 Supreme Court decision that is going to come down, that's going to then give Trump immunity, that's going to lower the fight for them in J6 even more. Mm -hmm. The lower it can get, I think the better you can fight because they again, just until it's different, it's still innocent until proven guilty. So they have to they have to prove that I did all this stuff knowingly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't go in there knowingly like it was a trespassing thing. It was wide open. I was just walking around. I got there an hour after all the stuff went down anyway. Yeah, that one of their articles wrote. It wasn't even like a conservative article they wrote. Yeah. That. I was like, thank you for the timestamp. That's just reality. <laughs> I was like, I appreciate it. You know. So yeah, I, I think. And, and no matter what, it's going to work out well because uh, I just trust the Lord's going to take care of me as I've watched him do it already. So at the end of the day, I could just think it's going to work out. Awesome. Right. Yeah. Well, now that we've talked about the serious stuff, let's get back to the ridiculous stuff, shall we? <laughs> also, that wasn't ridiculous. Yeah, that During was, that, that portion, we had a couple of $20 super chats that had no message from, from Disco Jensen. Thank you, oh. Disco. So, thank you, thank you Disco. Thank you, Disco. Thank you, Disco. You just like the story. <laughs> okay, so so guys, now yeah. that we've gotten through the serious stuff, let's yeah. talk about the ridiculous stuff. As you know, Hollywood has a, a strong affinity for race-swapping characters. And yes. as I said before, guys, they would learn all the wrong lessons from the Barbie movie. Instead of making movies that people want because there's an open market for it like the Barbie movie was. Remember, that wasn't successful necessarily just because it was a Barbie movie. It was successful because there's a market for movies that women actually want to go see yeah. that aren't a bunch of male superhero characters that have been made into women. Movies that men like that have just had female characters shoved into it. So what they... It's pink, yes. fun, girly, nostalgia. <laughs> but they think, no, it's because it's a toy. Yeah. So yeah. let's yeah. just make a movie about every toy yeah. that ever existed. Why not? So what like, they're doing is they're making a Bob the Builder live action movie and they have race swap oh, no. Bob by the way it's not it's not a live no, action it's movie it's an oh, animated it? movie so he's gonna be the voice actor but Bob the Builder has officially been race swapped to be a Latino character the film follows Roberto wow. aka Bob who travels to Puerto Rico for a major construction job and digs deeper into what it means to build there's a $20 one here from the ninja from pop culture planet it says wow. I've been blessed to get my daughter every day this week from school Cool. Her name is Brittany, so please, my favorite culture earthlings, say hi to Brittany. Hi, Brittany. Hey, Brittany. Hey. What's up? Hello, Brittany. Good to hope meet you. you. Good, good to meet you. Yeah. I hope you had a good week and you have a good weekend. Yeah. So, yes, it's what does it mean to build? So, what? You think every construction worker is Latino or something? That is, is that racist. what I'm hearing? I think That's I saw, racist. I think I saw. Um, Super racist. There was a spicy tweet from Jeremy from, or I'm sorry, from Gary from Nerd Rock. It says it's taking place outside of a Home Depot. Oh, uh, <laughs> Yeah, it says uh, for years, Bob the Builder's characters wow. have inspired young people around the world. A movie about friends working together, a celebration of the beautiful home they share, and how love can help to conquer any obstacle in your way. Can we fix it? Yes, we can. Mm -hmm. Yes, we can. Uh, <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, guys. That was good timing. I like, I like to do my uh, Bollywood dance. Yeah. The show's ability to promote positive thinking, problem solving, and empowerment with a completely original story, it's not original, set in Puerto Rico, <laughs> puts a new spin on a beloved brand. We can't wait for new and existing fans to connect with these amazing characters. And by the way, Bob the Builder joins a slew of Mattel films that are in development right now. So they are American Girl, a live action movie based on American Girl dolls. I don't know. Which one? And who wants that? <laughs> no one. There's a twenty dollar one here from uh, Ghost Soup. It says, "Great show, guys. Siaka wow. is great. Is a great addition. Love his point of view, his faith, and his pride in our country. Have a great weekend, Crisis Actors. Thank and, you. And uh, who's that? That's Ghost Soup. <laughs> Thank you, Ghost Soup. I like saying the names. Yeah. yeah. No one's like just David. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Thank Ghost you, Ghost Soup. Ghost Soup. <laughs> Make sure you guys get some Ghost Soup. They were soup. very polite during the interview portion. They weren't yes. interrupting. They, they, uh, they're very they, nice. They, about they're them. very nice about that. So you know that your 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 crisis actors are actually respectful. I like that. Yeah. 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 So um, there's also going to be a live action Barney movie starring Daniel Kaluuya. There's going to be a Vin Diesel Rock'em Sock'em Robots movie. And of course, the Polly Pocket movie starring Lily Collins, directed by Lena Dunham. I'm, I have such high hopes for that. It's totally not going uh, to be even more <laughs> of a feminist stink bomb than Barbie was. I have a question. Yeah? Um, those people that were upset that Apu was played by a white guy, where are they? 
Yes. No, no. Mm. What happened? They, they, it's only. Uh, it's Got only when. I think it can only of... go in one direction. Oh damn it! That's yeah. right. Getting think... rid of Apu was a crime. That was that. <laughs> that was a crime against humanity. That really was. That was. This is this is garbage. That's yeah. who we start off. This I mean, is didn't they do the same thing with the character of Cleveland, uh, like the actor who voiced him? They had just, they had to change that as well. I, well, no, they didn't change it. They just stopped bringing him on for a while. Okay, yeah. an American Girl movie, like okay. American Girl has already produced like made for TV movies have with they? all of their they have this line of like the historic dolls like one from every era of American history and I grew up with those and they made them like Shailene Woodley played a girl in the American Revolution era um but this is going to be like a blockbuster budget yeah. real production <laughs> that people are expected to see in theaters and this is going to make its money back. Oh, it's not going to make anything. No, no. Yeah, and also, like American Girl dolls, they were not impactful on as many childhoods as Barbie dolls were. Yeah, That's just all. a fact. Well, you know, I... <laughs> they were like, you know, relatively expensive dolls that were like I highly they were sought new. after. I thought they were new. Newer than Barbie. Yeah, it was like the last 40 years. Yeah, no, so like not as much of a nostalgia selling point as the Barbie movie yeah. either. Nope. And it's not really aesthetically anything because there are different characters in yep. different historical periods. So See, just stupid all around. Dumb. Um, it's yeah. dumb. But, but you the know Vin what? The Vin Diesel one is like, could, Maybe. it could appeal yeah. to, to boys. He should, make but a, he should make one for Street Sharks because there's this very famous old commercial of Vin Diesel where he's... Uh, he's Street Sharks. He's showing... So there's this old commercial that still goes around. It makes the rounds on Instagram <laughs> where it's Vin Diesel. He's like He looks like he's 18, 19 <laughs> yeah. years old. I mean, he still looks like an adult. Yeah. It's, it's, Vin, it's Diesel. Vin Diesel. Yeah. And he's doing this commercial for Street Sharks. I remember and, uh, Street Sharks. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. why... Wow. Well, look, okay, wow. Minecraft did they roller movie. There's a, yes, they did. Yep. There's a live action Minecraft movie coming out. Why? Is that this year or next year? Who's next the character? What? I believe next the year. The live action Minecraft movie. I guarantee you that's going to make Mario Bros money. Yeah, it is. It is. Because I, my, I have three different, deal. I have three generations of godsons from 15 to six. Yeah. All of them are Minecraft. Yeah. So, and just like the yeah. Five Nights at Freddy's movie. Like yeah. that was just a like easy slam dunk see but that's that was box easy. That's i'm not saying it, it was a great movie no, like personally i didn't like it that much but here's what they, they go with what's do. marketable yes do, do this what, what are we looking at here we're looking at boomer this is boomer he's got the biggest <laughs> mouth of them all he's the whale shark say hello to that round mound of pound <laughs> power slam. very deadly oh he loves to tenderize the competition before he eats him <laughs> got make this movie Sledge the Hammer Well no they saw this and they were like Vin Sledge Diesel the hammer perfect yeah, yeah. choice yes. Floor the competition with the flying headbutt <laughs> They got me He's the leader of the street sharks He's a great warrior He's got the feel real shark skin And he's, His special power is the right hand Roundhouse punch <laughs> He sends a competition to a watery grave. Boom! <laughs> <laughs> show you, I want to show you something Amazing. up close and I mean, th th That's, hey, that's wow. the movie they need to make. Yes, I would watch that movie, actually. I'd watch that. Um, yeah. No, but part of what we're seeing, we saw earlier, we saw all that money that they're dumping into garbage, basically. If you look up and you look at the level of censorship, we look at we don't really know history, so we don't look back. Look at the movies in the last eight years. They start to make it harder and harder for people to be able to stream certain things. They took Trump out of Home Alone too. Now you look up and when my, you know, my kid who's not born yet in 10, 15 years when they're adults, do they have the original Turtles movie to watch? Yep. Or do they have only the Michael Bay movies to watch? Do they have, sir, do they have uh, some of the old classics or do they have our new remakes to watch? However, I, like I will say the Seth Rogen TMNT movie that came out last year, I loved it. You loved I thought it? it was great. She loved it because she's and not a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I didn't yeah. see any of the original yes. content, but yeah. I loved it and I thought it was done well, like for a remake and something that's derivative. You know, I liked it. But that's, and that, that is the example right there. That's my example right there. Because then you start to go, we can just continue to move away from its source material. And not saying it's wrong for you to like it, but those who don't know the source will sit there and be like, oh, it wasn't bad. And I just like, think I like, like idea. usually the remakes, the reboots, and the spinoffs and the sequels, they're not done well. Part which of is it why we well. cut them less slack. Well, they're, they're usually not done well. But at well. least if it were done well and made its money back, then it would be no big deal. Well, uh, I, think it's, I think it's a mixed bag, right? Because 
part of the reasons why people don't like remakes is because the the original had more heart. And if you don't really know the heart of the original, it's sometimes it's easier to like the other one. It's automatically more corporatized once you get to the remakes. Yeah. So, sure, yeah. Uh, the, the, for instance, the 1990 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie <laughs> was at one time the most successful independent movie of all time because it was a Golden Harvest production yep. before, you know, because New Line wasn't what the New Line well, became is now. later. Yeah, yeah. So it was a much bigger deal at that time because it did have... Uh, uh, another way to point that out would be in... Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, they pointed out in the um, Honest trailer for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 that the moms complained because moms have been complaining as long as time has existed. And the moms complained that it was too violent in the first one. Yeah. So their weapons stay pretty much holstered the whole yeah. second movie. Instead, you have to see Michelangelo use like Sausages. sausage links uh, rather than nunchucks. After that dope one uh, in the first one? Yes! Okay. Like I was like, what? I'm, the whole time I'm like, all right, where's the weapons? Okay. It's, uh, uh. It, was, it, was damn, it was a damn shame. Okay? And they didn't use the weapons against those big monsters they Made fought no either. Sense. I'm like, what are you talking about? I would have stabbed him right in Things the heart. Things get watered ah, down. The- well, I mean, they realized that, you know, if they're not going to green light original stories, mm-hmm. the only thing they have left is existing IPs and name recognition. So they just have biopics. Yep. Like the only thing that's going to get people to pay for movie <laughs> tickets point. now <laughs> is point. if they recognize the name. Yeah. Bob the Builder, recognize that. Barbie, I recognize that. Bob Marley, I recognize that. Whatever. House of Gucci. Like, it just has to have a brand name, a celebrity name, or the name of an existing IP. And nothing, you're going to see nothing else. But it's laziness. Yeah. Right? It's laziness. It's, it's, their, their laziness should not be, the culture is going to go to go, all right, this is on TV, but their laziness, again, I always keep saying this, this is where we can strike. Because their laziness is giving wide open room for comedy, for better creative ideas than what they have. I mean, the up. stuff that's the stuff that's less IP driven and more risky ends up on the on streaming platforms, anyways, yeah. and then nobody watches any of it unless it's like you said. We are in an, in a pandemic of biopics of living people yes. now yeah. because even a celebrity's name is a brand name. Which That's allows the them thing. to continue. We got a twenty dollars one here from Nate. Says, "I love the old turtle stuff and the new one. What's the problem with the new one?" Look, I, I said Have you seen it? my no. my point. <laughs> yeah, was we that reviewed it. My no, point was that no. I thought it was fine as a as a kids animated movie, but mm-hmm. as a turtles movie, it does not hold up to scrutiny. But then again, the people who they're making it for are for the kids of the people who have already seen yeah. the other. They ones. always say so they will we want them. to appeal to new and existing fans, yes. and sometimes we that's a, not possible. We missed a twenty dollar one up here from the manic uh-huh. mustache. Can you read that one, Mary? Um, let's see. He said the manic mustache. <laughs> yep. Uh, as a POMC, late as always, and apropos to race swapped Mr. Clean, I never really cared about race swaps until this Bob the Builder debacle. Now that Bob is a Latinx, I'm here for the stereotyping. <laughs> Disney Tarzan, they I will, dare you, they Disney. Will never they would do never. Tarzan. No. Tarzan will never Look, I, I'm I'm the one who always admits firsthand like look the race swapping doesn't bother me as much as it does other people as long as race doesn't become part of the character's story yeah. right okay or, but that's obviously what's going on here it's yes. like we're talking about can... puerto rican culture yeah, and yes. that's like what makes oh, it so colorful and vibrant favorite, my other favorite yeah, and love is, uh, is how they elevate like they try to like like turn this into great art i'm like bro it's a bob one of the characters is a cement mixer like Like, did you you like how far can you really go for like this like transcending art the way they describe can you reread some of how they describe this movie it's insane yeah Uh, the uh, show's ability to promote positive uh positive thinking problem solving and empowerment with a completely original story it's about bob the builder here's the worst one okay so he travels to puerto rico for this construction (sighs) job and according to the official log line audiences will see bob roberto as he takes on issues affecting the island and digs deeper into what it means to build. Bob's journey will celebrate the vibrant and colorful textures of the Caribbean Latin nations and their people. This is why everyone- What, the- what are you talking this about? It's everyone, Bob the Builder. This is why everyone hates you. Yeah. This is why everyone hates this you. This is crazy. Like, like, I understand that you had to make some type of press release, but what you need to do is instead of hiring publicists, hire stoners to like, <laughs> read, like to make up a synopsis. At least it'll be funnier. It would be funnier and probably more concise. It's just totally awesome. They build shit. Dude, they bro, fix shit. Bro, and they, yes, shit. they can. Yes, that, that, it would be great. I would watch that. Yeah. 
Bob the Builder, huh? This is like I, they they should have made the pitch about like promoting trade school to, to young children. Yes, something like you can work <laughs> that, with your hands. Promoting world, hard work in ethic. In a world and, where student loan debt is crippling yes. three fourths of the nation. Learn to plumb. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? You Learn can be to a plumber build something. Yes, use you know your how hands. women always say, like, I don't care what men have to say, build a house. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There it is. That's what we started doing. Become a man. Did you see the photo? T somebody posted this photo today of like Joe Biden at like uh, in Superior, Wisconsin, posing with a bunch of like union men, and he's wearing a hard hat backwards. <laughs> oh, jeez. Come on. Is that real? I don't know. Well, I mean, he's I, probably I, wearing his underwear backwards. My too. hope is that it's. <laughs> My my hope is that it's real. I at think least, it could be with Joe. At least it definitely they didn't could be. make him. At least they didn't make him like a like an illegal. Like I I wouldn't put it past Hollywood to be racist enough yeah. to 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 make it a story about a character being afraid of being deported. Uh, they're going to touch on that. You know yes. they are because they, they He's you know family that because you know what they did yeah. and this is with Hollywood too because they don't actually outside of going to Europe and stuff they don't really go into some of these areas. They went to Puerto Rico. They didn't go to Mexico or or, or you know Guatemala, Guatemala. They went to. Puerto Rico, yeah. the the sands, you know, USA, right? It's like just a just a safer little, to go it's, there. It's, yeah, it's yeah. A, just a little inside, but it's not really the cartel stuff, <laughs> <laughs> you know. And then they're and then they're gonna watch them pour everything Latin into Puerto Rican yeah. culture now. Everything's gonna be like Let's they're even gonna get some some what? Jamaican in there because it is a tr uh, what is a Caribbean, uh, Caribbean. Latin They did Moana like almost a decade ago, and that was fine. Why can't you do that? Moana? Well, they are they are making a live no, action I, Moana I'm saying, I'm because they they're not <laughs> dirty. Did like, they know? No, they haven't made. Oh, the so, Moana. I'm thinking Mulan. Yeah, my no, bad. They, they could do uh, like uh, like they know how to do these things in a way that's at least mildly less offensive. It just has to be an original story. Yeah. Well, like if you want to make uh, a story about Roberto the Builder, then make Roberto the Builder. The Builder. I mean, yeah. eventually they're gonna run out of things to remake, and they're gonna run out of things to adapt. And no, they won't spin they, off. They will right? Have, no, they will. Because all of these things yeah. exist because someone made something up yeah. that was new. You're going to run out of eventually. There is a finite no, amount they, of IP that you can use out there. They option new books, new every things day. every well, single look, day. Well, look, a book, I don't mind. Bullet Train is based on a graphic novel. Yeah. No there's one really knew comics, that. There's a lot of comics out there. Yeah, that's I fine. At, I worked in a production company, and there's so many scripts that are sitting on the walls that you'll never see the light of day right now. Yeah. But every day you're reading stuff that just, sorry, it won't ever exist. So it's out, it's there. They have the They have the capability of creating awesome stuff because it's there. It's mm -hmm. just sitting in the office and like, well, we can't get money. I have so many things that I like because look, the stuff that I love isn't at that point yet, but I know plenty of shows. <laughs> He's like, I'm movies. fine, so like, screw you guys. <laughs> kind, no, kind of. Like, all, like, I'm lucky that the shows and movies that I love yeah. tend to be so like, like they're just not important enough for them yeah. to, to remake, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, they're, like, I'm still waiting for them to try and do Dark Angel again, which was a 2000 show from James yes. Cameron starring Jen, uh, Jessica Alba. I used to love that. Yeah, so oh. like, that, like I'm just very lucky that I don't get most of the stuff that they I They just heard you through. say that? All the so US, they're all like, the they're USA, making calls right now. All like, of the <laughs> USA <laughs> Network shows that I loved are not, have not been remade. They haven't been touched <laughs> yet. Thank God. Well, give it some yet. time. When they run out of the, holly, uh, run out of the theaters, <laughs> when they they're coming for the syndication. When they burn notice, I'm coming for you. Mm -hmm. oh, it's then coming. it's personal. When they race swap Michael Weston and and, and make him gay. I'm and they make pissed. Fiona fat. When Fiona make, fat. No, yeah. They make Fiona a dude. It's gonna Our be dude. a fat dude. It's yeah. gonna be Finn, and he's gonna be fat. And it's mm -hmm. gonna suck. Yeah, I'm like, this is just like a version of uh, of Sherlock Holmes that they rather do. Instead. You know that they're making a, a show uh -oh. about Watson, go. but it's but it's race swapped Watson yeah. with. Um, uh, Morris Chestnut, who's a good actor, by the way, fantastic. Oh, actor. great actor! But um, yeah, where it's there is no Holmes in the show; it's just Watson, and it's he goes back to work as a doctor. Well, it's like a prequel, so it's basically right? no, it's uh, or, uh, so it's after it's after Sherlock has died. Oh, okay. And he goes back to work as a doctor, so it's basically House. And he has flashbacks to his to Sherlock uh, days. To, to Sherlock days. So they're basically gonna try to dangle Sherlock over. And I you and I gave you guys a pass with the Lucy Lou Watson, which I thought was fine, <laughs> even with, even though they ra they gender swapped Moriarty too. Yeah. And, I, and they had a and they had a trans Miss Hudson. Again, yeah. I was fine with this because it was 2012, and you know when you're politically less initiated, it's less annoying. But that's yeah. where it starts. But that's you, where it starts. It's so, it's, it's a soft. Yeah. Most, like I, I actually use the Miss Hudson example. It's like her character makes like six appearances in the show. They mention that she's trans in a passing remark. It, the character's introduction that's never mentioned again. Really? Which I'm fine with. Okay, you if it weren't mentioned, on. would you know? 
Kind of like that dude on the if, uh, screen. If it weren't here. mentioned, would yes. you already know? Okay, that's the point. Uh, by by that person first, being maybe, on maybe screen, not, it's being go. mentioned. Maybe not, maybe not the... Normalized. Yeah, but, that's the comment. Yeah. They, they said it earlier, and then they just made it... Maybe not the first time I watched it. Maybe I would have had to watch it a second time. The voice probably gave it away. You have like, a better a radar bit. for that now. Oh, oh, <laughs> like, that's, a, that's a good point. Like, now you're... Yeah. Now you're, you're, you're always looking out Whereas back then, you're just like, wow, that looks different. And to be fair, the person who plays Mrs. Hudson does fine in it but that show went uh, went downhill in the later seasons Bl uh, Brexit gets mentioned in one of the later oh. seasons Jeez, that was when on. I turned it off when Brexit got mentioned I'll tell you this man I, I don't want to see it you know, uh, people are talking about it and the whole Texas thing going on I don't want to see a civil war or a war but much like we saw in a little bit of the pandemic if any of that stuff happens <laughs> that trans stuff is going out the window that trans stuff that like we can we can do we don't need no man type stuff that is go on ask the trans people from ukraine who they said here's a gun yeah. get back well, out when people front. are in life or death situations they don't need to create adversity for themselves anymore so <laughs> that's, exactly that's really true. why we're in this situation that's it, that's it. we're so comfortable yeah. let's, uh, let's go to super chat all right scenario. we have yeah. a ton to get oh. through andrew Jacobs said ben's swipe at lizzo is worth the dollar 29 alone there you, there you go. go yeah i wonder if lizzo is going to respond that would be that would be great. She makes, Wilder. A, she makes a diss track. <laughs> yes, Shane H. Wilder said, "Happy Friday, Brett, Mary Siaka, and all of the crisis actors joining in Civil War II electric boogaloo." Maybe she'll eat bananas <laughs> out of a yamaka. <laughs> Uh, Steve Kralik said, welcome, Siaka. Brett, you should have included one more option in the poll, based and cringe. The left are better at art, and that's still true here. Look, uh, I, I think... It looks good. It lo that, I, I would say this is an it's example where the, well. the production value on it's very high. I have to push back on them. The left is not better at art. If they're not. They just have all the money and the voice right now. They're not better at art. I, I just believe that the best uh, that left uh, left leaning artists who create art without thinking about politics is uh, more likely to have a positive outcome. Whereas right now, right leaning art tends to be fueled by political pushback. Yeah, yeah. So for me personally, yeah, that sure. doesn't interest me. Yeah, but yeah. most of the time, when I see that stuff, it doesn't. It just it doesn't interest me. Like right now, the left is making. They have that civil war movie coming out. The one the the A twenty four movie. Yeah, yeah. And I thought that that was in, that would have been interesting a decade ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, well, I think, in the Obama years, in like the late two thousands, early twenty tens, when the liberals weren't feeling threatened and cornered, exactly, they didn't feel the need to shove their messages in everyone's throats like as, as blatantly yeah. as they do now. Right. Exactly, they were better at it. Back and they, then. that means that they were actually better at art back then yep. but woke, now, now it's terrible woke art for the left is just christian they've deserted the right. all so they, they don't know yeah. how to do it without putting the message first they have deserted <laughs> the normies that were in their own yes. ranks yeah, that yeah. were fine to just go along and get along they yeah. pushed everyone out yeah cheney twilder said if we keep getting all of these new polls is that but then oh Polly's, then we're going to run out of crackers <laughs> i'm sorry i'll get my coat and see myself out Thank that you. was funny yeah that was do, i like that you tried they tried though let's that was do good. two more Marco said fun. <laughs> Yoshima Otaru said Villeneuve ruined the lore of Dune already. Again, like I wasn't mm. super connected to it to begin with. So uh, Who did? Uh, did? He's saying Denis Villeneuve, the director of Dune. Oh, yeah. he ruined it. How so? Uh, I, I, I don't know. I haven't read the book, so oh. I don't. Uh, I don't so. yeah, let's no. hold off on the rest of it. Let's, okay. uh, let's make a choice. Do we want to cover Polly Work or do we want to cover Sydney Sweeney? I want to cover Sydney. Want, All right. Because that's we'll, like. We'll cover okay. Sydney Sweeney. Then. Mary, tell us what's going on. Yeah. So Sydney Sweeney is starring in a new horror film called Immaculate, in which she plays a Catholic nun named Cecilia. Cecilia realizes that she is pregnant in a convent despite her nunhood while fearing the sinister potential of the baby growing inside her. Look, I hate it when that happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's just this and Pepto, you'll be fine. Rough, There's really man. nothing new about the horror genre having an insane fixation on Catholicism in yeah, particular especially. and Catholic aesthetics. Yeah, yeah. But it's like... I don't know, try something new. And this is apparently, I didn't know this, this is a whole film genre called nunsploitation, a subgenre of exploitation film that peaked in the 1970s, typically involving Christian nuns living in convents during the Middle Ages, usually of a religious or sexual nature, such as religious oppression and sexual suppression due to living in celibacy. So they turn to de degeneracy and lesbianism inside the walls of a convent. Does this make 
Sister Act, black exploitation, nun exploitation. <laughs> Neither, and it was a good movie. I thought, what do you say? I I'm just so sick of this. Blunt blunt exploitation. <laughs> Let's take a look at the trailer. Okay, well we'll watch the trailer. We're gonna get, we are gonna get copyrighted on this one. Oh so yeah. We'll, it's we'll, just necessary. Guys, for, uh, for I'm gonna pull this after the fact. If you're watching on the replay, I'm I'm pulling this out after the fact. So it's not gonna God save me for a reason, but I'm still searching for what that reason is. <laughs> Oh, I, before we get started, can you tell me why they do the trailer before the trailer? Whenever People don't do have this? attention spans. Yeah, that's it's why. quick. It's the quick thing. Check this out. Look at this. Look at that. Look at that. New trailer now. Yeah, yeah. yeah like, that's... I'm going to start doing that for the show. I'm yeah. gonna, we're gonna like go the video's live. already two minutes long. Yeah. Yeah. The more reasonable explanation, explanation is that she lied. Yeah. So that comes out next month. Or no, in March. And uh, That's not going to make any money. Immediately, I saw comments saying, don't you guys ever get tired of mocking and disrespecting Catholicism? When are horror movies about Buddhism, Islam, Hinduism coming out? Why are Hollywood producers insisting on tarnishing our religion and associating our sacred symbols with scary things? We deserve respect. The better, the, there's actually a much simpler explanation for this, which mm. is that the Hollywood population of people making these movies grew up in households that practice these religions and they're using their art to push back on something that they no longer believe in. Well, they're people who make their that. entire personality out of like, I went to yes. Catholic school and it was so hard and I I was a victim of religious trauma I'm also, I'm not saying, and now I'm going to make my entire personality about rebelling against Catholicism and religious authority. And I'm not going like, to pretend. Like, you're a nerd. I'm not going to pretend like they would greenlit green light the movies based on pushing back oh, no. on Hinduism or any of those. No. I don't think that those would be no. green lit. No. But I do think that if you're wondering why these stories are plentiful in that arena, it's because you're, you've, we're growing up, we've lived in a country where Catholicism is at least prevalent amongst yeah, the a most large popular portion. Yeah, Christian, so people Christian grew up with it. They are now pushing back on it with their art in Hollywood, who's not willing to push back sure. on these other religions, says, we need material, we'll do this material. But I'm not sure I agree that it's not going to get make money back because oh, it's a horror movie. Horror horror movies tend to make. make their money back because they don't cost that much yeah. and then sydney sweeney is in it and she's super she? trendy right she? now she was in euphoria she's gonna be in madam webb she's oh yeah in white so, lotus so, right. so like, three movies i've haven't watched and won't so yes she's she's Sorry, uh, she's, like, is a TV she's like big with gen z there you go a lot of I'm people old, saw guys. this recent rom-com she did with glenn powell anyone but you oh, i didn't expect I did. that to make money because it that's, looks like crap that's past 100 million dollars yeah really? it's it's making its yeah. money back so i assume that this actually will make a profit but it's unfortunate because they just have such an obsession with blasphemy well in that's Hollywood. that's i I go, I go to the point of that's the point of it, though. Yeah. It's too blaspheme. Mm -hmm. You look at the images that they showed there. They're connecting the occult with Christianity. That's what they're doing right there. They're, they're saying, look how easily it can go. It, I'd say, everybody, read your Bibles, people. Because if you read the Bible, you know not to be afraid of anything that happens there because it already tells us what's in there. It already tells us how it's going to go. And so some woman who's get immaculate, you know, conception, I believe what you, you said is right. She's lying. But <laughs> if, if that's not the case, you know, it can't be anything negative because we're told what it's supposed to look like. So if we actually read our Bible, read, read, go all the way through to Revelations, you'll go, oh, this is nothing. But look how they put it together, the images. Mm -hmm. They had, what she say? She, what was that word she said? Uh, uh, pain or torture or something? She kept suffering, saying, suffering, 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 suffering. Suffering is love. They've completely perverted the core tenet of yes, Christianity, the which is that our Savior suffered for out of love for humanity. Exactly. And also, exactly. the scary idea that they're using like to unsettle the viewers is a satanic perversion oh, of Mary. the Virgin Mary. Yes, exactly. With this idea that the devil could have the same conceive power a child in a, in a woman. Do you see? Yeah. So they're giving the devil the same amount of power and glory as yeah. God. That's what they're doing here. And so maybe some of it is like I was church hurt, so I'm going to push back. I've been in there long enough to know this is just who church these people hurt. are. Is that a term? <laughs> yeah, there's I a lot of people out hurt. there. They were like, they, they go oh by church gosh. hurt. Yeah, but, but I believe Hollywood is just so demonic, honestly. This is their way of uh, glorifying Satan. And going, mm -hmm. look how great he can be. Even that final picture with her, with the curls and in there. That's like, we know exactly what that's coming up and that's to invoking. And right. you know it's going to piss off some Catholics. But at the end of the day, don't see the movie. Leave it alone, much like the, the Pope's Exorcist. By the way, this is why I say it won't make, I don't think it will make money because the Pope's Exorcist 
was made two years before it came out. Yeah. Cost a lot of money to make, though. Cost a lot of this money one, to make. I, I bet you the budget the on Pope's this Exorcist was, small. was so yeah. bad. It was terrible. Yeah. Even for just a horror movie in general. But it came it out. So it bad. came out the week uh, right after uh, Nefarious. Yeah. Nefarious lost true. theaters because of that. I was talking mm -hmm. to Steve of Dace about it. They lost theaters about it, but because Christians went to go see Nefarious and not Pope's Exorcist, and they made that movie, boom, and you know, cons conservative, free mind, whatever. That movie tanked so hard. Yeah. And it got thrown away. It's actually seen as one of the worst movies of 2020, uh, 2023. Yeah. So. Guys, we see this, they're gonna blaspheme. Don't go see it, let it bomb, let it hit the bottom of the barrel. They're gonna come back to it because they're godless people. They want to, you know. Unfortunately, I am skeptical that franchise. it will bomb. I'm skeptical of that. Uh, there's a $20 one here from Mikey. Says, I'm willing to bet the baby is male well, it's too. It's a demon. Oh yeah, demon. it's a boy. A little demon it's de baby. Definitely a boy. Well, I see, it's really encouraging to see some comments that are on the same page with us. They're saying, feels like we've seen this movie so many times yes. already. Strange seeing this actress with clothes on for the first time. <laughs> Another said, this is so cheesy, Hollywood. How about you make a movie, a horror movie on Muslims and other religions? Hmm. But they ain't trying to get canceled. That, well, like that. that would also be seen as a uh, uh, punch. They would see that as like not staying in your own lane. Yeah. Um, they wouldn't be allowed by their own rules. Yes, they, to can't, they can't touch Islam. They yeah. can't touch it. Not, yeah. e not even just out of fear, but they would not allow themselves to do it. I think it's fear. Yeah. Yeah. That's I, a Hollywood is Hollywood's are very fearful. No, I mean, You'd be surprised. I mean, like, like I, I don't know if it's not necessarily the same thing as like they're afraid that they're gonna end up like Mia Khalifa and have a fatwa taken out on them. What I believe <laughs> is that they're fearful of the pushback they'll receive from their from oh, their yeah. colleagues. Oh yeah. Well, oh, yeah. even yes, you're completely yeah. right. Even the argument about like they're making this because they're church hurt or they have religious trauma that they want to channel into their art. <laughs> Thank you guys. I thought they came on because you said <laughs> church hurt in the church. church. Hurt. <laughs> it's like the Pee Wee Playhouse. <laughs> yeah. Church hurt. It's so bizarre to me because Catholicism has really not had the same cultural impact in America that any Protestant denomination has. Mm -hmm. So why is this coming American out of Hollywood? The Does the average That's, that was, it was so more man, that. You bring this up all the time. I don't know the difference. It's more that. Like, I, don't, it's I, more I, that. I would say it has a big difference in the subconscious of this nation and, and the way that it's way that American morals were formed. It essentially was from Protestant I th thinkers. I think if you grew, but I think if you if you're someone like me who is a, a Sunday like Sunday Catholic at best, uh, holiday Catholic yeah, most yeah. of the time. Sure. And you ask eighty percent of this country to define yeah. the difference between Protestant and Catholic, they wouldn't. They wouldn't have tell no you. any idea. It's because Catholic. The truth is, it's the most popular version of of the of Christian uh, religion, and it is the most uh, in your face. Mm -hmm. You know, you have a pope, you have a whole thing that goes on there. The Catholic churches are kind of, they've There's seen as bigger. There's longer history of art and aesthetics yeah. to draw upon. Yes, they, they, they put themselves, I would say one thing, one thing they've done really well, Catholics, they put themselves in the public sphere more consistently. Catholics have gotten a faith around the world probably faster than any other uh, denomination in the history of, of Christendom. They, they've, they're from their monasteries to their, uh, to their, um, you know, going to missionary works. They've gone everywhere. There's a reason why they're number one. So what do you do? You go after the number one. You don't go after Baptist Church. Yeah. And know? in general, <laughs> why are you going after Christianity? Because well, it's because true. you f you feel in your subconscious and the deepest part of you that it's true. It's because it's true, and that's what makes you rage against yes. it. Well, I also saw this announcement that Brett sent me. Martin Scorsese's Jesus oh, yeah. movie yeah. begins filming in April this year. So, I do that, we know any details about yeah. this movie about this? yet? Did you hear this, they're I casting? I, I heard some fake news about it that they're gender swapping Jesus, and I was like, that doesn't sound right. That's what I heard. And it was fact checked as, as like you know that's we don't know who the cast is yet, but I just I'm not. They know who the cast. I don't April? have high hopes for anything coming out of Hollywood, yeah, especially religious. that regards yeah religious themes. At Let's all. see here. I mean, we're we still can we're still possibly going to get you know um, the Passion, Passion of the Christ, Christ sequel, two, yeah. Passion of the Christ two yeah, but who, Boogaloo. But who's mm -hmm. doing that is different. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's Mel Gibson. Right. It's uh, uh, um, you know the production companies that work with Jim Caviezel. Jim Caviezel they're Cavie very they're into that. De-age Jim Caviezel, man. Mm -hmm. It's been twenty years. I also, know. you guys talked about I this know. on the show I <laughs> when I was gone last week. This show on Amazon called Has Been Hotel. It's a kid's cartoon, and I uh -oh. was not aware of this, but basically the main characters are Lucifer and Lilith. Yep. So <laughs> Lilith, the Jewish for folklore figure who was the anti-Eve, who rebelled against male authority, 
and uh, basically like it tells children an alternative revisionist history of the creation story that casts Lucifer as the, the good hero. guy yeah. who's spreading love and light throughout the universe. See, that's all this stuff, guys, guys, I know. And you said you're like not super religious. This is why you need to be because look what they're doing. If it didn't matter, if it was fake, if it was a fairy tale, why are you going out your way to produce something to say that God isn't real? That you're going out to do it's something that, to say it's he's that weaker. It's that question. Why do you care so much? Well, yeah. okay. <laughs> I, well, I can actually, I can answer your question. Yeah. It's because Amazon wants money because they're also producing Catholic entertainment. They're just covering. Oh, all that's that, true. It doesn't. No, it they just signed this a, big deal for Christian yes, faith-based films. Oh, well, that's because that's coming back. With I'm the saying Wonder Project b- before it's a corporation. that, but before that. That, they were doing that for a reason and it wasn't because to make money because all they were doing was crapping on Christianity. What they're doing now is they're seeing that with Jesus Revolution, with the Chosen, they're seeing that there is business well, that, there. Well, that's if what we can make money off Christians, we'll just make now stuff do, to pander. Exactly. I, I just maintain that, look, there may be executives there that, that don't like the religion, but to me, I, I don't treat corporations as people or as humans. I, I don't like it when corporations say that they have uh, you know morals or whatever. They say, they, well, this is our... Yeah, these are our are, yeah, like I hate that, right? Yeah. Like a, a profit seeking entity at the heart of, you know, if you're talking about capitalist endeavors here in America, your job as a profit seeking entity is to try to maximize your ability to sell your work. And yeah. so for Amazon Prime, all they're looking to do is use their capital to bring in viewers from multiple demographics. Right. I don't see that as inherently evil. I see that as a repercussion of strong business mind. Then that's good. To her point about the animation, mm-hmm. that is to go out there and saying God is weak and He's real. Yeah, that's something they've been doing for a while. Tune yes. out with the with yes. the yeah with the people who created it. Sure, yeah. I'm just saying that Amazon is just the company yes. that's putting it out there. They saw the success of Sound of Freedom as well, which though not being really a religious movie inherently was taken that way because mm-hmm. of how it was promoted in the media. It, I mean, if it doesn't openly revile people yes. who have faith, then it's considered faith based film. Exactly. <laughs> Look, Especially what if they do good, I, right? Especially I, if they do good. I watched a movie last year called The Hill about this baseball player yeah. who had a, a handicap who made it all the way to the minors, yeah. and that had a strong faith element to it. I thought that movie was fine. Father right? Stu was great. Did Father you see that? We both yeah, loved that was Father amazing. Yeah. That's what we need to do is like, is not tell stories about Christianity, tell stories starring Christians, being yeah. Christians. Like that's well, what Mark you got to do. Mark Wahlberg is or working. Just any story with a redemption arc. In general. There you go, and that's the, the that hero. Or, or, that doesn't have a nihilistic message yeah, that yeah. everything is hopeless. <laughs> that, that's despair, uh, the hero, suffering. the hero's journey. That's yeah. literally what they went away from, right? Yeah. And they try to put it in there in this new fa- fashion way, like it's all going to burn, but we'll have nice colors, kind of like summer don't make love. Don't stories that are anti-humanity. Yes. Like, look, I yes. loved, I loved the show, uh, the show Lucifer. On I heard TV. a lot of people like that. I, show. I loved that show. I thought it was fantastic. It was a lot of fun. But mm. again, I'm not religious, so it's. Was it supposed to be like a comedy? Or it's like a it's, it's dark so it starts, satire. It's, yeah, it's it starts off as like a as like a dramedy. So it's basically half drama, and his character is very much funny, like in, in the way yeah, that yeah. he kind of. Um, he, the the best part of the show is the 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 character of Chloe, which is the the female detective who he um he interacts with in kind the of show. Like his partner. Yes, yeah. his partner. She's constantly put upon by his behavior, and that adds for great you know they have a great mm. chemistry together yeah, yeah. on the show, and it does talk a lot about how uh, him in his human form she does like his uh, his charms don't work on her, mm-hmm. and he changes because of her. And I, I didn't like the later seasons once it got bought to Netflix because I love the old um, I love the procedural drama that's yeah, still yeah, yeah, yeah. I still love that model. You know, episode uh, yeah. of the week is still great. Yeah, to me. I know. I was saying, um, I do, I they do brought too. in <laughs> like they brought in like um, literally like. Cain and Abel, like they brought in Cain, played by Tom Welling later. Really? And like, look, and it's it's fun. I enjoyed wow. it a lot. Interesting. But I don't believe that. I'm guessing that people of uh, more religious backgrounds might not take well, the same a friend ap- of, approach. A fr- uh, I think it was a pastor friend of mine watched Lucifer, and he said the same thing. The first two seasons, he really enjoyed it because of that. But because it spoke to him more, not that Lucifer was out there being like, you know, the red, the horns and the tail and yeah. the pitchfork. It was more what sin really is, and that's just the lure. He 
he is very screw tape letters. Yes. He's an amazing yeah. singer and pianist in yes. the show. Yes. And he's well, extremely, extremely ta- charming and he's charm is charming. deceit and beauty is and fleeting. Very, yeah. very carnal in his yes. uh, behavior. Yes. So like all of those things rang true to me in the actor who that's Tom Ellis, the actor who plays him, is absolutely fantastic. It, yeah. So And that's like, who Lucifer was. Yeah. yeah. He was so, the number one angel. He was the most beautiful one who was out there to to, uh, to praise the Lord. That was his job. They they and bring him. Got, you know, they bring his mom in, and <laughs> really? yes, uh, in the in the in the middle seasons, and he's constantly at odds with mom, and he hates his dad, and <laughs> he, they never call him God. At least not that they yeah, call yeah. They, they call him dad. Was it written by Mormons? What do you mean his <laughs> mom? Uh, uh, it's, uh, yes, like, <laughs> I don't know where what folklore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I was like, like where's the mom coming? Out? I was like, so Jesus they, as a woman? Like who else okay. would it be? <laughs> so so it's uh, it's it's really interesting, and I, I think it was uh, a lot of fun. Again, those later seasons when it becomes less. Uh, episodic when yeah. it becomes more serialized I, I've kind of fell away from it yeah. I really appreciate the model of television where they have to tell a good story every 45 for, for every, minutes yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they usually have that in, in the world of TV it, in their bible it goes to four to five years Yeah. so after year four or five that's when you start seeing certain shows go to crap because Almost they every only have show, it four years like, uh, like if, like, look at like people who, like I just finally got through season one of Supernatural it took me took me like five years of trying three times uh, like at least once a year finally got through season one and everybody says it goes 13 seasons stop at season five like wow. most shows you can stop at season five the X-Files is one where yeah. like uh, I there's good episodes in season six there's good episodes in season seven but they become less common as yeah uh, as it goes on because they run out of ideas that's how I feel about One Piece yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you guys watch One Piece at all. I'm a big anime know. nerd as well. I watch more anime than A lot of people recommended regular. the live action. It's actually not bad. Um, it, it, yeah, it's fine. I think One Piece did that. I got up to season six and I was like, what are you doing? Like, what's going on now? What happened to the One Piece? This but, is what I loved about Person of Interest stopping it at, at season five. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. They yeah. didn't yep. make it go past the fifth season because they, the first two seasons were fairly episodic with mm. uh, layered ends for the mid-season finale and, yep. the, and the final season finale. From season three, four, and five, it becomes all one story about basically bat- one, one AI battling another AI. And they even shortened season five, which I appreciated yeah. because they got the story done quicker. Yeah. And if it had gone on longer, it would have been depressing. So they didn't do a Game of Thrones and rush it. No, it was good. Okay, no. okay, my bad. So, yeah, yeah. I just uh, a coffee cup on the on. That's just. I'm sorry, guys. That is just wild that they allowed. They've, it to they've digitally removed that now, though. No, I want. I want the original. I want Trump back in. Yeah, they don't don't. <laughs> they digitally yeah. removed the the coffee cup now. Did they lighten everything up too? No. Did they change the battle plans for uh, Winterfell? Oh, they like. I mean, that, that scene is still very dark. It's ridiculous. It had to be done that way because they didn't have the budget. Even though they, I mean, they did have the budget. They but didn't. Want, they want to put yeah into their pockets. Yep. All right, <laughs> uh, let's finish it up. Let's do super chats. I don't want to read this one. Uh-oh. Okay, Corey Anderson said that there are probably dudes in Mary's DMs that wish they were her sink. They the way she will spit on them when she brushes her teeth. Honestly, then he said, "Mary, that was just a joke." LOL. I think that you weren't joking. You're projecting. Yeah, Honestly. I was gonna say. I think he's the one that wants to be the sink. It's okay. Just own it, brother. Just own it, man. This is the age of the internet, man. He's probably not wrong. Or yeah. don't own it and just <laughs> leave say it to nothing. yourself. Leave it to yourself. Yes. <laughs> Shane H. Wilder said, "When I was out of town with no Wi-Fi, all I had was the Office box set and a hard yeah. drive of things my Alex Jones parrot helped me procure." Uh, <laughs> and he also said, "Damn it, Corey. WTF." <laughs> Uh, Mikey said, uh, we already did that one. We're oh, on, we're Tacti, Tacti Platty just said Tacti Platty. Thank you, Tacti. Corey Anderson said, now that the government is trying to ban Zins, I guess I should start using them. I've never smoked. What flavor should I get? <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> Don't get, um, do it. No. Why are you telling I'm, him not to? I'm, Cause it just, just don't do it. Why not? Is it tobacco? It's nicotine. Nicotine. So what? Well, it's a gateway drug. Is it addictive, Mary? Uh Oh, not to me. <laughs> that is the best answer. <laughs> Do you have an addictive personality? Then you should probably stay away from it. There but I don't feel any type of way Let when I guess. don't go without. I, when I go without them for like a week. Yeah. How often so. does that happen? Like it never Not does. often. Yeah. <laughs> you could stop anytime. I could, but like, why would I? And there it is. Right. Brett. Brett. I, yeah. yeah. So suddenly, Brett's the moral absolutist about something. What I said, don't okay. do it for practical reasons. <laughs> okay. I am. I am. I'm I six years sober, but I have no problem with people. Do, I have no problem with people doing drugs. I'm just saying, 
do you want to spend the money? Do yeah. you want do you want to lose yes. the money? Yep. Yes. Do you want to, okay? Well, then if that's if <laughs> yes. that's your decision, unironically, then go ahead. I, and as, Chuck Schumer, you can come and take it. My yeah. my my my, my did it look, in I'm, Cali I'm, already. And I'm for the most part, I'm I'm legalized and regulate for most things because uh, you don't you're not right. going to. There is no war that has been lost more times than, than the, the drug war, war yeah, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. I'm just saying. <laughs> I, I'm just trying to give you some advice so that you don't have to end up there. Put it on a free market, guys. Yep. It'll, it'll fall apart on its own. Organizedbusinessservices.com said Revenge of the Nerds 6 starring Ben Shapiro's song. Perfect. That would be great. Love it. That, Daniel that G said it's very telling of motivations when one side engages in public discourse and the other uses corporations, agencies, and lawmakers mm -hmm. to quiet their detractors. Generally speaking, much respect, Siaka. Oh, thank you. Who was it? What was the name again? Daniel. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Daniel. See, that was a nice, good... Good regular name, name. Uh, regular Normal. name. I'll remember Not that many name, of yeah. those in the yeah, chat. That's okay. Yoshima Otaru said CCP allows industries in to steal tech and knowledge. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what that's PCC it. is doing, which yep. happens to be CCP backwards. Yes. Oh, wow. But you're yeah. doing the other stuff. Yes. See yeah. how that, that spells CCP evil back backwards over there? That's beautiful. Yep. Yeah. I'm going to get a picture of that before I leave. Sir Ranko Productions said Ben just hit number one on iTunes. Wow. Congrats to Ben. Yeah. Uh, Corey Anderson asked, where is Ye's security? Yeah, that's a good question. Where was Ye's security in there? <laughs> they probably were sick of him. <laughs> yeah, they, they had to leave. They're like, I got to get out of here. Corey Anderson said, Brie LaRose is a cancer. Who is that? Well, the people's joker is Vera Drew. Yes. Brie LaRose is the one who's responsible for the idea. Okay. So I guess. Wait, so Brie was the one that was on the no, video? No, Vera, Vera Drew was, Vera was, was the... So the Vera, I which, still maintain that as cringy as that was, Vera Drew is actually a halfway decent. Yeah, yeah. Should we have Vera Drew on the show? <laughs> yeah, you can ask. If, he'll, probably, he'll probably come just because yeah. that. Um, of course, he's a good actor. Look what he's been doing for his whole life. Like when he does the thing where he says where he goes. That's a good point. He gives like the long <laughs> monologue and he goes, people's joker like yeah, that, yeah, that yeah. was that was yeah. good inflection that's good, and timing. That's good comedic timing. Yes. But, you know, we again, I, I, I will argue that. He's a good actor because he's been a good actor. Yeah. <laughs> he hasn't stopped acting. Shane H. Wilder said, damn it, Trudy, people's joker is a wicked witch who lives in hell. <laughs> <laughs> Corey Anderson said, this video makes me dislike DC Comics. Yeah. Yeah. I well, they're it. not responsible for it. I know. Don't they? It's okay, man. <laughs> not that John Stewart said, happy Friday. Thanks, Trudy. Let's go. I'm Let's glad go. to know that somebody's happy that we had to watch the whole thing today. Corey yeah. Anderson said, Blazing Saddles is the greatest movie of all time, followed closely by Shooter. Ooh. The 2007, the one with Mark, Mark Wahlberg. Wahlberg. Also, Unspecified. fun fact, another thing that never needed to happen, but I liked was the Shooter TV, TV show, show starring yeah, Ryan yeah. Phillippe. Yeah. Had no business being as good as it ended up actually. I mean, they, they had to wrap it up really quickly because it got canceled. Didn't he get into some trouble? He, I mean, I he did something. He's... Um, I've heard that he's just kind of a like an outlier in Hollywood. He doesn't. Uh, I, I like him though. As he's, an actor, he's Cruel kind. Intentions is one of my favorite movies of all time. So that is, uh, yeah, he's he's. I mean, he's a decent enough dude. Yep. Smoking in the club, but other than that, he's a decent yeah. enough dude. He's, uh, he's, <laughs> that, that show is that show is pretty good. Corey Anderson said, "Trash movie, The Garbage Pail Kids." Yes, that's and that's not just the clever phrasing that he yeah. used. It actually is garbage. Um, <laughs> and I used to love it. I watched. Uh, used to collect the cards. Organized Business Services said, see, guys, I want Jason Whitlock on the show, please. Yeah. Does Jason Whitlock care about pop culture? Yeah, he does, actually. Does he? You get uh, like you guys okay. get you guys get on there and he's really big on uh, the trash black culture right now. So you guys right. can get all over that with the whole gangster rap stuff with the whole. Hey, I'll be the one to defend the gangster. Rap. Hey, I got let's no go. Dude, Look, I'm I, telling you, Jason. As I mentioned all the time, I grew up. I'm, I'm a white kid from the suburbs. So yes. I grew up mostly listening to gangster. rap. Yes. I listened to like e most people who listen to it. I listened to E40 and Mob Deep this morning. So well, good for you. I was doing the opposite, man. I had like Incubus and like NXS or something like that. I was like, <laughs> I, I, I mean, I, my, we had like a pretty like wide genre like yeah. my, my brother had playlists that were like country rap yeah know, rage against the machine american live. music yes no uh, i no i get that it, it's it's actually that's who the demographic to bought most hip-hop is white suburban yeah. kids and i growing up in a suburb i was listening to grunge so it was actually flipped mm -hmm. for me but yet everyone was like hey do you listen to mob deep i'm like who all eyes on me What's from tupac on? and east 1999 eternal from bone thugs and harmony are two of the greatest albums of all time Ooh, I like illegal drug money with uh, um, who was it? The 
uh, I'm forgetting their name. The Lost Boys. Ah, Do you remember the Lost Boys? Yeah, so is, that was a nice little window. Era. That like was I, a nice little somebody window. Somebody mentioned uh, Tupac did, uh, I mean, he didn't blaspheme, but after he died, Don Caluminati, the Seven Day Theory, put him on the cover of the album as Jesus. Yes. Um, he wouldn't know. touch that stuff. No. Tupac would. He was serious about it. Yep. He was serious. Also, also Methical. Mm. Yes. Mathical's album was one of the best albums I've ever, anyway. Uh, Wu-Tang. <laughs> Wu-Tang. This is a very Light Gen X conversation. Yeah. Wu-Tang, Mac Dre, all yeah. sorts of stuff from that time period. So if, if Jason Whitlock wants to argue about rap music, I can argue about rap music. Let's go. You get, <laughs> I, well, we I, I always wonder about these pundits and like how many of them are just purely political junkies or some of them might no, he's more have pop a different culture. side to them. No, he's more pop culture because he came from sports, mm -hmm. right? So he'll talk more about the sports world that you can bring in. Like, yeah, he's, pop he's the one that made me watch uh, Leave the World Behind. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because he wanted to talk about it on the show. I Somebody like, oh. mentioned Radiohead. Yes, Radiohead was very big. Like, okay, so yeah. it, coming from skating, it, there was a basically a law at one point where every skate video had to have yeah. a, a yeah. Radiohead song, to which I would roll my eyes and <laughs> groan every single time. I'm like, bro, I get it. Like, I get it. Artsy, bro. <laughs> Great. You, Radiohead made it legit. You wanted or sound to make garden. a montage in slow-mo. I love it. Ugh. I know. Yeah, I remember that. GA said Ben is in on the joke. His rapping is cringe. The left doesn't get that, and that's why it's based. Tom is just legit great at rapping, and it's the best out. I'm ending the poll uh, I, without, <laughs> without yeah. being asked today. The verdict I, is I, in. I always forget. I always What's forget to end the poll. What was the percentage? Fifty, sixty-one percent say based. Okay. Thirty-eight yeah. percent right. say cringe. So today Good. it is based. Nice. Here we go. We got it. Corey Anderson said, in my opinion, NF is the best rapper right now. Tom McDonald is a close second. It isn't bad. NF is really good. Who's uh, NF? He's another rapper. He's, uh, he's uh, gives vibes of like older, angry Eminem and some of his stuff. Mm. It has very meaningful. Mm. Uh, do, you guys, so, do you guys not, do you listen to Bryson? I don't listen to a lot of political, like stuff. I listen that to some of Oh, I, because I, it's I more don't. political? Well, I don't. Because yeah, his style like, is dope. Like, I like his uh, style. I maybe I would have back in 2020, but yeah, now yeah. I've just gone back to listening to a lot of, uh, yeah, a lot of that, a lot of that, a lot of that secular godless Z stuff. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, Zion I, another great Zion rap, I, uh, yep, another great rapper. Well, Bryson did a great one about Housewives. <laughs> That's what actually it's actually was fire. You gotta check that out. Yeah. Um. Someone okay. Ken Lipson said, "Read Jordan Peterson's tweet." LOL. I, oh. Yeah, his, basically he he made, what is this? he said to Ben Shapiro he said I thought rap was a thoughtless or he, he made a comment about it. he was supporting it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he of, also said I'm for whatever the hell this is, smiley face. <laughs> Somebody says he Ben Shapiro should be Lil Shalom. <laughs> Lil Shalom, yeah. I want a Jordan oh, Peterson that would be rap fire. verse. Jordan Peterson next. Yep. The Ninja Bear said, tagged you on Twix about the clip from Axe Murderer. In my opinion, the funniest part besides when the dad calls the kid big head and yes. says orange on a toothpick. That is hilarious. That is right. He, go, he goes after that. We can't play it on the show. Though. He goes after that kid's head so viciously. I remember that. That was one of the bust out laugh moments <laughs> in, that, in that movie. Tech said, your guest is approved. Come back again. Boom. Perfect. Was that, was that the, was that the, the official people? approval. By Tech? Tech is the... Thank you, user. Tech. Yep. Keep uh, keep watching. The Undertaker said, come on, Ubuntu clicks for cash. Be a mensch, Siaka. So that's what they were doing? They were trying to get you to click in that... In oh. that <laughs> Did you do it? <laughs> no, I didn't. Because I was, no. hey, I don't know the language. I'm not gonna <laughs> make it up and just going. Mm, 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 mm. That, like, maybe actually, on the loincloth, but I'm not gonna. But I'm not gonna do the. the yeah, maybe the loincloth. Actually, no. Remember, I just all I did was at least take my shirt off. I was like, I'll give you the bare chest, <laughs> but I won't do that. But the clicks just sound like eating on yeah. the mic, so I'll yeah. give you the. I remember when um, when Red Man and Method, Method Man, Man would talk was... about um, would talk about how they didn't like to necessarily play roles where they play gangsters, yeah, yeah, right? Because yeah. it they liked playing against type. Yep. They would do it if the if the script was right and stuff like that. I appreciate that. Yeah, you remember also, their they're, movie? They're, uh, they're underrated as actors. Oh, do you uh, remember their movie? Uh, which which one? It was a college movie they did. I forget the name off top, but it was um, a college movie. Yeah. It, it was How High. My bad. It yes, was How High. Yeah, yeah. It was hilarious. I thought that was so funny. And, and as actors, they're actually pretty good. They're really so good. Like, uh, I, I love that. Because they were having fun. Yeah. That's what I get back to, guys. Having fun. And Ice Cube can world. act. If Ice he, Cube If he wants good. to, he can act. 
act. Ice T can yeah. act as long as he's playing the cop on SVU. <laughs> he's like, yeah, man, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Organized Business Services said, Siaka Masaqua, did you play with Jason Whitlock or just friends? Oh, we're just friends. Uh, he's older than I am. I know. He, if you go see him, he has more gray than I do now. Ah. I'm only 44. He's like in his 50s. See Brett and Mary get Jason on the show. And Mary, it's 85 degrees in North Palm Beach today. Jealous. Uh, it's, it's actually 68? an insanely yeah. good day yeah. today. It's almost Al. 70 here. I was sweating when it's I walked. Warm yeah, it was, it's it was a little too, too much. Yeah. Too much. Mikey said, I used to like The Rookie with Nathan Fillion, mm -hmm. but Fillion. that show, Fillion, but that show hit rock bottom for me. I heard, okay, so that show came out like right before uh, George Floyd and then like took it from what yeah, I was told. Two years before, yeah. From what I understand yeah. that once George Floyd happened, it went downhill really, really fast. I couldn't bring myself to watch that show because I love him as, uh, I, first of all, I love Firefly, of course, mm -hmm. but I love him as uh, Castle on the show Castle. Yeah. So, uh, Fillion's great. It felt like, it felt the rookie was like a poor Castle. Yeah. He uh, he lost a lot of weight to do that role though. Like really? he got in a really good shape. To, good for him. You know, for him, he's an older dude. I mean, the whole point of the show is that he's an older dude who joins the police force. And he's actually supposed to play Wonder Man. Yes. In the new Marvel stuff that I probably won't watch because mm -hmm. I stopped watching it two years ago, three years ago. I think I remember people tweeting about that. They were like really happy about Wonder Man getting race swapped. People. Oh, no, he People love uh, Nathan Fillion because he's a character actor. He's been around for yeah. ages. He's a nice guy. Yeah. Mikey nice guy. said, Siaka, that is touching as heck. Talk, that was, that came was during the story about J from J6. Yes. Oh, man, Mikey, thanks, brother. Appreciate you. Corey Anderson said, you were arrested to reinforce your belief in God and to show you proof of God. Oh, yeah. I, I believe that. I believe all of it is his, his plan, so I appreciate you, Corey. Pat the Plumber said, feds are watching and trying on your MAGA hats. <laughs> they, did they just wanted the MAGA hats? I know. They, I, they, they, took, they looked cool. They took two of them, and I was like, I, like the one, I, one of them that I got was the first one I got, because I voted for Trump in 2016, but I didn't rock anything. And it wasn't until uh, August of 2020 when I went to a rally in Vegas, and somebody handed a hat, and I'm like, it holds here power. I go. I was like. Boom, I put it on and I felt Teflon, baby. That's why they took it away from me. Serenko <laughs> Productions said, wow, not even gender swapped. Where's the Latinx representation? <laughs> SMH, where's Bobert? <laughs> Boberitsk? The non-binary filter? <laughs> what? <laughs> Bobert? <laughs> Bob it. <laughs> is the X silent? I don't know. Or no, you gotta X put. You gotta ask the X, uh, like Latinx. Uh, okay. <laughs> Bobix. 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 <laughs> Bobix. <laughs> the undertaker said, "Every construction worker isn't a Latino, just the affordable ones." Oh man! A trip to Home Depot's parking lot can save you a ton of cash Clean. on projects. That's Clean. a real thing. That's and not. Like, that's not a joke. No, and they the, are hanging out in the parking <laughs> lot all the time. The Home Depot over here has its own police force. Mm -hmm. Not even kidding you. Has like a, a a cop car with like it says like Home Depot on the side and has like lights no. that they turn on to like get people out of the parking. lot. <laughs> wow. Every time I'm back there, I'm like, I wonder if I spent through the parking lot if you pull me over oh they don't have anything in la baby they got everyone there yeah it's all set up you get it's it, tent it's city it's tent city it's 20 dollars and a 12 pack of uh modello and <laughs> you, no i'm not even i'm not saying that to be funny i'm saying that because that's what worked the, i've done uh, it to help the, move this is why the this is why uh um south park did it so well when they did the pandaverse when they had yep. all of the uh the people who would normally be on the side of the road now they're the ones who have all the money because they run the construction they're wearing company. gucci <laughs> track suits and, <laughs> and then the all the people who need work done are sitting on the corner needing someone to hire someone exactly yeah. exactly i was market. a writer for the new york times <laughs> tell you we're gonna look up we're gonna look up pat the plumber said was there an american girl doll that was just beach no there was not huh they had stories okay <laughs> <laughs> Taxi Plotty said, Brett, cowboy roller skating tricks when? None. I, I saw your meme uh, that you sent me, though, earlier, buddy. It was funny. One of my favorites of all time is uh, it's like a picture of this, like a cowboy boot that somebody bought at a thrift store. And it's got yeah. wheels like glued onto it and it says uh it basically says like uh nobody nobody says i can't yeehaw out of here <laughs> and, uh, yeah i'm sorry some of those dad jokes are just they got to make you I laugh i love the dad jokes i'm just getting ready that's all the manic mustache said that vest is super butch Vinny. <laughs> talking about the vin diesel thing we watched oh yeah yes. yeah that was what? i was like this is a if sports you jacket see a great early vin diesel role watch the movie boiler room with giovanni ribisi mm. um it's it's really really good and vin diesel's in that movie he's not the lead in that movie but yeah, yeah. he's really really good 
Shane H. Wilder said, didn't they already make a Rock'em Sock'em Robots movie called Real Steel with Hugh yeah. Jackman? Yes, they did. But oh. they, didn't, they didn't call it Rock'em Sock'em, so, you know. Well, that's what you need to do then. Whenever they make one of these movies, we're like, why don't you just make a different movie and call it yeah. something else? It yeah, not Real that Don Stewart also said, we already recently did Rock'em Sock'em, Real Steel with Hugh Jack Jackson. Not, not It's Jackman in Jackman. 2011. I still sometimes say William Defoe without, uh, instead of Willem Defoe. I still screw that up sometimes. William. Willem. Huh? Yeah, I still screw that up sometimes. Well, I just screwed it up until you said it right now. There so go. there it is. <laughs> that worked. <laughs> Shane H. Wilder said, okay, Daily Wire is going hard with this Tom McDonald collab. Michael Knowles just rebranded his YouTube channel as Mike's Tom McDonald Reviews. Oh, Come yeah. On, the the promo see. is underway. <laughs> Love it. The Undertaker said race swap shaft with an Asian guy like Ken Jong. <laughs> um, why well, then? Then get Daniel Day Kim. Daniel get Day Daniel Kim. Day Kim to play shaft. I would be down. I would. I would. The amount of money I would pay to see the reaction from people would be. We'd have to go out with camera crews and like I would. Oh, it would be so beautiful. Yep. It would be, especially because it would be an Asian person, yeah. right? <laughs> and a black person that, that they, they yeah. switched it out for. It would be, it would be one of the most beautiful things. I, I recently seen. rewatched the movie Romeo Must Die with Jet Li Love and it. Leah. Oh. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, Great movie. And it's amazing how much casual racism there is in that movie. All the time. Uh, it, because it, it felt very real to the to the time because it came out in 2000. Yeah. And there are some slurs in there <laughs> that I was like, oh. Asian oh. slurs left. Yeah. I mean, you, ever, you remember Rush Hour? Go yes. back to Rush Hour uh, One. Rush Hour is amazing. I, I personally think it's fine. We should just get back to just talking because you get over it. But we look at it now. You'd be like, oh, right, Chris Tucker. Come yeah. on, man. Can you understand it's, the words that are coming out of my mouth? Yep. So Nasta you can't B even speak said, American. wise men say forgiveness is divine, but never pay full price to late pizza. For late pizza. <laughs> yes. Yes, that is true. Yeah, also, um, that movie is, uh, that's from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 1. Yes. When the Domino's pizza driver is late, late, despite the fact that the movie was sponsored by Pizza Hut. I think that was the point. That's to be like, you're late, you're not getting your full the, money. Oh, yeah. So, so the, the They wanted that to be in there. There's a very <laughs> famous ad at the beginning of that movie on the VHS of the kids playing baseball, and the kid catches the fly ball. Um, yeah. It has Goldberg from uh, Mighty Ducks. Mighty that Ducks, movie, who yeah. Just hit, Sean Weiss just hit four years sober. He was one yeah. of those actors who was down and I actually, out. I was actually, oh, man. I, I went to the hospital a couple times to sit with him. You know him? Yeah. Okay, and it yeah. And was, it was... The one time I went back to go visit him after we went one day, I mean, I'm telling you, God is working that, that he saved his life. He was at a point where his hands were atrophy because of so much uh, uh, meth. Yeah. And we're sitting there and, I, and we're talking and we're connecting and I, that I came back like maybe three or four days later and he was gone. And that was one of the things that broke my heart. And then I saw like it was fake news that he had passed like a week later. Uh, I was like, oh my, I was like, this is It went is viral because he had this mug shot that was yep. particularly like Terrible. he was in rough shape. And look, yep. as somebody who was uh, at a time, you know, a little bit before that, mind you, like who was in a place similar to him. Right. It, and obviously he was part of a movie franchise that yeah, I loved so me too. much. Yeah, me too. He's, he's, a, he's one of the few celebrities that I follow on social media because he's just got mostly wholesome. He's mm. he's a stand-up comedian now. He's oh, traveling. Good for him. He's, uh, he's working. He does, he does like really in-depth cameo like he has a cameo yeah, yeah, that yeah. apparently people love so it's just really good, good to see somebody like that he know, made it guys get over the get over the hump and really yeah. turn his life around yeah daniel g said i'm personally offended by roberto the builder unless they lean in completely roberto travels in an 80s truck with 10 of his cousins and get paid in Modelo. <laughs> Not gonna happen. Sorry. <laughs> Let's get that ninth crisis party, guys. <laughs> Rofty said, "Dude, we totally can." Bob the Builder and Shaggy voice. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Twenty piece said, "Thank you, Siaka. Your story about God's favor on your family is very impactful to those that follow Jesus." There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Who was that again? Uh, twenty piece. Twenty piece. I, I was. I didn't know if it was really twenty piece or what I saw. Thank yeah. you, twenty piece. <laughs> The Undertaker said, remake the classic, the sword in the stone, but make him gay. Hear me out. He could become <laughs> Queen Arthur and slay. They, so they've been talking about like great. Show. You have to have a great chat. Uh. <laughs> Your chat is great. It's the best chat I've heard and been on the it show kind of so is. far. They've yeah, been talking about that show Griselda. Um, oh yeah with Sofia Vergara oh. and I keep having to hear them use the phrase queen pin mm -hmm. instead of king pin and I can't help but it's laugh. cringe every time so I hear terrible. them say it I just laugh yeah queen pin queen pin <laughs> 
Yeah. That just sounds wrong. I mean, I don't know if that's an actual term, but I've they'll, never they'll, heard they'll it make before. It. <laughs> Trust me, they'll push it hard enough to try to make it. Tacti Platy said, Brett, Warehouse 13 gender swap for hot H.G. Wells. Yep, they have uh, an actress named Jamie Murray play H.G. Wells in that show. Um yeah, hot yeah. H.G. Wells, who's, yeah. uh, who's uh, hot, hot and like also that. several hundred years old because the time the show involves there's time travel. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. The Manic Mustache said, make Bob a day laborer. His wife hits their kids with sandals. <laughs> Grandma sits in front of a big window ignoring her son's alcoholism. The son has a face <laughs> tattoo. Live action adaptation. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> See, we've got the idea. I'd, wa I'd watch that one though. Yeah. Bob the Builder Two, Chonkless Revenge. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah, I would say Bob the Builder. Chonkless Revenge. Chonkless. Chonkless. Oh, ch <laughs> I can't. I, I would say Bob the Builder Two. We see you in East LA. Yes. There you go. <laughs> The Undertaker said, I know it isn't a classic that will hit on the radar of young people, but if any of you three sat down and watched Smokey and the Bandit, you should. Yes, it's amazing. It's amazing with the chimp. What? Have oh, you? yeah. I haven't seen it. No, oh, seen you it. like fast cars before they were cool? Yeah. Uh, I don't know why I did that. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> that, was, that was from the 70s, baby. Um, and he has his chimpanzee. Okay. That is like the best chimpanzee you'll ever meet. Like you hang, like he hangs out. He drinks beer with him. There, it's it's amazing. I don't like now it is you just have ten. monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> just the in I general thing. I don't yeah, like looking like, at monkeys. I don't want to watch any of the King Kong. Oh, I don't really? want to watch like Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, which is coming what is, out. What, like, what does that do? Is it like freaky out because they're, they're too close? It's to Uncanny human? Valley. Like you know okay. they. All right. They Mary sees out. herself in the... They freak me out. Look, it's like, if it's too close to to looking at you like a human, I can't. Like, I it, has, like it has a soul. They, look yeah, in his they, eyes. Creepy. Yeah, all right, now chop his head off. You're like, I can't. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Undertaker. Okay, I don't, I don't want to read that. Oh, I love The Undertaker. Uh, not that John Stewart said... Bwah. I think that's what he wanted me yeah. to do. Wah. Tra all trailers Wah. have the same sounds. Low Wah. 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 That was uh, Christopher Nolan. Shane H. Wilder said, they don't get how to do a movie about the demonic or Catholicism. How about leaving it to us Catholics who know what we're talking about? This is why William Peter Blatty's The Exorcist worked. Mm -hmm. And the Exorcist believer didn't. Mikey said, go. oh no, Jacob Edler said, Immaculate is also anti-natalist propaganda. Babies are wrong. Birth is suffering. There's, yeah, there's also a lot of body horror about pregnancy yes. and birth yep. in there yep. that I noticed. They got to keep that. They got to keep it up because it's about womanhood, not motherhood. Yeah. There's a great scene uh, in the show House where this woman cheats on her, her boyfriend and they've never had sex and she gets pregnant. And so they go to, she's like, um, they go to the doctor and he's like helping them in the clinic. And he tells them it was immaculate conception to like, as like a Christmas favor mm -hmm. to, to keep her from or the, her from getting found out by the wow <laughs> wow because he, he makes a bet with Wilson that he can't get it that Wilson says you're 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 it's impossible for you to treat a patient well enough to get like a Christmas gift and he goes so what he does is he lies I for lie. this lady yeah. well it's, it's, it's like, kind of lie. it's kind of frustrating because just in the title of Immaculate they're misunderstanding what that word means in Catholic theology because yeah. the Immaculate Conception refers to Mary's conception yes. it's very specific who not Jesus yeah. Yeah. <laughs> meaning she was conceived Conceived without original sin. That is the idea that they are trying to parody, but they don't even understand Catholic mm -hmm. theology well enough to do it. Well, and on it's the other bizarre. side, on the other side, again, it is the uh, first mention in the Bible. It talks about how, how uh, what happened to Mary and that, you know, the uh, the archangel came to her and was like, look, this was going to happen. If and this movie, is non-consensual. Exactly. Yeah. And so none of it happens. God came and had Forced a conversation. Upon, yeah. Exactly. So it, it can't be. It can't be anything positive. Mm-hmm. Shane H. Wilder said, also, putting the nun in Mary in blue was not lost on me as a blaspheming mm -hmm. Mother Mary. It is so surface level from the church hurt. Blech. <laughs> I agree. Blech <laughs> speaks to my feeling about it as well. I love well. it. I love it. Serenko Productions said, Rosemary's Baby to Electric Boogaloo. Let's go! <laughs> the Undertaker said, um, if Catholics were as outraged by same-sex orgies which occur in the Vatican with the same energy that they cry over a movie, I would be impressed. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not really sitting here crying about the movie. Both of these things that you've listed bother me. 
there's also nothing I can do about either one. I always find that I always find that argument very interesting. It's like basically on the other side, it's saying just shut up. That's right. really what it's saying because because some terrible stuff happened and you know around the organization of the faith that you follow. I don't follow Catholicism. I follow Jesus. And so because something happens over there, it does not mean that I can't see terrible over here and talk about it. Like, I don't understand. What do you want me to do? You want it's us just, to be quiet? Like, so you, you like apples? Oh, so you hate oranges. Yeah, so you hate oranges. Yeah. Yeah, un yeah. Until you say something about how the oranges have been, I don't want to hear you say anything more about apples. Until you like, talk about how oranges have been systemically oppressed, yeah. I don't want to hear any of your opinions apple. about apples. You're like, come on, man. <laughs> Jeez. Shane H. Wilder said, look, Martin Scorsese already did a Jesus movie, yeah. The Last Temptation of Christ. It has been banned by the Catholic Church because it was blasphemous. He's mm -hmm. Italian, right? Yeah. Scorsese? I never Scorsese. saw that movie, did you? I didn't see it. I saw clips of it. I, I, would, I would go back now and just see kind of what they're talking about in it. But, I mean, you know, mm. it's Martin Scorsese. I'll watch Godfather instead. Potatoes for Seamus said, hi, Brett. Have a good weekend. Let's go. <laughs> you as well, my friend. Potatoes. Yes. Shana Twilder said the Zin answer is coffee or citrus. Oh, yeah, I didn't give a recommendation. Um, I eat, like cinnamon and citrus. There you go. Yeah. Not that John Stewart said, Mary, you can take my Zins for my cold, dead hands in hell. <laughs> Come and take them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Quite Blackfield said, Brett, Zins just got three milligrams higher. Nine milligrams Zins. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Look, no. I, I support, you just made the drug more potent. I support your right to do them. I'm just saying if, if you start later in life, it's just maybe not the greatest idea. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Bucky Ducky said, Director Phil in chat. What up? What's up, Director Phil? Yo! I Yo, Phil, I didn't know you. he was in the chat. Yeah, thank you. Phil was a good guy reaching out and mm -hmm. did the connection. So thank you, Phil. Yes. Phil's awesome, man. We, 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 we love watching UFC together and debating till my wife complains about it. So, <laughs> so yes, Phil, love you, bud. The Undertaker said, Siaka, check out Lost, Motto, or Happy by NF. Okay, there it is. Tacti Platty said, as an anime fan, do you like any, I don't know how to say this, Macross? Mac Ross. Uh, I got to see it. I think M A C R O S S. I don't I think know. Think I've seen M A. You sure. know what? Um, okay, so I do know this. I'm not a big fan. Like you were saying of the space operas, I'm not really a big fan of anime space. Mm -hmm. I like the fantasy anime or the here in the real world yeah. or or like kind of a dystopia. I did the only one. I, I take one back. The only one I did like was Cowboy Bebop. Mm -hmm. I did like that, but Macross now, I wasn't a big fan of like space anime, but okay. you know. Um, Bucky Ducky said Alex Jones rap when? Well, he already has, yes. there's already the Alex Jones video game. Now there should be Alex Jones rap, rap to go with it. That video game is ridiculously awesome. Yeah. Yes. I would like to see that. Desumasuku said, please check out movie Caveman with Ringo Starr. Uncle showed me that past and mm. I did the same for my niece and nephew. It's one of their favorites. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> the Undertaker said, I play right field. It's important, you know, you gotta know how to catch. You gotta know how to throw. That's why I'm <laughs> playing right field way out where the dandelions grow, is the rest of that. Oh, see. Oh, good for him. Um, okay. <laughs> Desuma Suku said, women are like bacon, smell good, taste good, slowly kills men. By the way, as Latino from Texas, I proudly own a Texas and Confederate flag. Don't call us Latinx. Yeah. We would never. Uh, and, but here's Just the thing. Like, if you're going you. to have to use the term, you should use the phrase Latinx and not Latinx to be dismissive of the term yeah. yes yes latinx is funny yes shane h wilder said i think you're confusing Smokey and the bandit with any which way but loose what R uh, hold on let me double check we'll double check we'll double check i'm not sure i thought Sm i thought the bandit i thought Smokey was the uh was the was, was the a chimp? was a chimp? Okay, uh, an exploding printy said you'll talk about how much you like apples, but you won't say anything about Johnny Appleseed spreading an invasive <laughs> fruit species across the U.S. I hate the internet. I really do hate the internet. I do. I do. It's got to be a joke. You know what it is? <laughs> I, know. Lean in I, on it know. I know that he's kidding, but I like uh, like I, the whole point is like just now, like use your platform to like talk about that issue, yes. maybe. Know, also, there's like, nothing worse than somebody says this is important because we need to start a conversation. No, we don't. <laughs> 
No. No, 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 no. I want to start a conversation about Who's shit. Who's we? <laughs> you know, if you want to start a conversation, like go you that. go start go that conversation. Who's I wanna, we, though? Look, I'm, I'm here to shut down conversation. Yeah. That's what I'm Not here start to do. Em. I don't want to start um, shit. Thank you for the, the reference. He was correct. Oh. It wasn't Smokey and the Bandit. Okay. So, but it was weird that Brett Reynolds were in two movies within the same five to ten year uh, period that had a fast sports car, American muscle car in it, and some kind of animal. Because Smoking and Bandit had a nice little gr- uh, 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 greyhound. No, not a greyhound. A uh, bloodhound. Mm-hmm. Bloodhound in it. And then one more here. Shane H. Wilder, it's two more. Oh, she two said, more. don't watch The Last Temptation. Why is there a sex scene in a Jesus movie? Once again, blech. The Undertaker said the bacon analogy was spot on. That was pretty good. Okay, guys. Uh, so before you consume your bacon for the day, uh, let's. Uh, <laughs> we're going to call it a day. So guys, would you hit the like button on this video and subscribe to this channel if you have not done so already. Siaka, thank you so much. You should let everyone know where they can find you. First of all, thank you guys. Thank you so much for yeah, having me on the show. Being here. Uh, you can ha- you can find me on Instagram at underscore Siaka Masco, S-I-A-K-A M-A-S-S-A-Q-U-O-I. You can find me on Twitter or X, the X, the artist formerly known yes. as Twitter, uh, it's Siaka underscore Massaqua. Uh, yeah, and you can uh, check me out at defendsiaka.com, also siakamassaqua.us for all my comedy stuff. We're having a live comedy show. I can say that now, right? Yep. Live comedy show uh, with my sketch comedy group, What the Fact. You check us out on Instagram at whatthefact.tv. Doing a live comedy show in, uh, in, um, Oregon and uh, uh, Deschutes, Oregon, and you can check us out. We're actually going to do online live showing too, so you can buy a ticket for about fourteen bucks, and you can watch it online for that day. It's going to be February eighteenth, and all the links are in the description. All the links yes. in the description. Um, we've got a couple more super chats. The Ninja oh. Bear says, "Siaka, favorite comic superhero, and Wolverine. why is it? And why is it the original Spider-Man as written by Stan and drawn by Ditko? Steve Ditko. M- my." <laughs> Has Marvel changed not only the movies? So Wolverine. Wolverine, Wolverine, because he was the misunderstood person that had that fire inside him, and he was kind of short. So always he was very short. He was very short. So Hugh Jackman, they 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 height swiped. They height swiped with Hugh Jackman, (laughs) which bothered which bothered me (laughs) a lot. I'm like, he's supposed to be shorter than Scott. That's why people want Daniel Radcliffe to play him because Daniel Radcliffe is short. (laughs) There he is, but he didn't look. Josh Hutcherson. Maybe. Yeah, uh, I like I like him from uh, uh, what Kings uh, the Kingsman. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. he'd be perfect actually. The Undertaker said, "It's Friday. You're not getting away so fast." <laughs> we are. And he said, "And, and here we go. Hostage party." Okay. This is what they do. Okay. Tacti Platy said, "Big avocado conversation." I'm not talking about avocados. <laughs> Big avocado is like really the enemy. This is the arch nemesis of is this it? podcast. Okay. Yeah. All right. Big avocado. Are there any more? Oh, we got. Yeah, we do have more. Okay. Disco Jensen said, "Taking hostages for likes on X." Not High Holder <laughs> seventy five said, "Call." today haha ha, that's cute sit down <laughs> sir Rinko production said hostage party the undertaker said danny devito as wolverine let's but. go and wow. one more here from jacob edler says wow. it's five o'clock somewhere here here all right it's actually six o'clock, o'clock here, here. <laughs> mary where can they find you you can send me validation on instagram at mary archived or you can send me hate on x that is also <laughs> mary archived perfect and if you guys want to follow me you can follow me on instagram and twix at brett dasovic on both of those platforms pop culture crisis is here five days a week monday through friday 3 p.m eastern standard time that is noon pacific amazon music apple Podcasts. Pandora and Spotify if you'd prefer to listen rather than watch. If you'd like to listen to follow the show on social media, we are on Twix at Pop Culture underscore show, Facebook and TikTok at Pop Culture Crisis, Instagram at Pop Culture Crisis Pod. Mary, we got a couple more there. Disco Jensen said, We got you now. The Undertaker <laughs> we ain't going said, nowhere. Are there any more? The Undertaker <laughs> said, We ain't going down easy. <laughs> Matt Gangel said, I suggested OC make mocha plushes for justice. There will be no mocha plushies you're like wow. encountering Clean. all of our inside all of jokes today. i like it I, and one day i'll get them <laughs> the so. ninja bear said wolvie was good but spidey had real problems <laughs> wait wolverine didn't have any problems what are you talking <laughs> so. about he had claws coming out of his hands man that hurt every that time hurts. spidey spidey just had a confidence issue that's all he had Sorinko Productions said out, almost spidey. forgot siaka taylor swift is the antichrist question yes, mark no. thoughts uh, I don't think she's the Antichrist, but she definitely gets paid by him. 
perfect. That's okay, a that's a good point. Steve Kralik said no dinner for hostages. No, we're not even like, oh, I'm, about to, I'm about to cap this shit because we're not going to even get to the 10th crisis party. No, we are. Okay, The Undertaker said, Mwahahaha. Jacob Edler said, you're going to have to plug the socials again, Brett. I will not. High that. Vulture 75 said, I got nothing. Desumasuku said, the dog was a basset hound. The ape was in a orangutan is the sumo, uh, the, the with sumo? Clint Eastwood. Yes, yes, yeah, he's right. Okay. He's right, yeah. Is, is he is he Nigerian by chance? Can he respond? Because that name Let sounds Let us very, know, I guess. It sounds Nigerian, brother. Shane H. Wilder said, speed read, Mary. The Undertaker <laughs> said, we do this because we care. <laughs> Disco Jensen said, Ellen DeGeneres for Captain Marvel. <laughs> Oh like, my like, goodness. Like that Tim's would kind idea. of be iconic. Yeah, I like, liked Tim's um, idea of um what was the lady from House of Cards? Uh, oh, uh, um uh, Robin Wright. Yes, Robin yeah. Wright. I love yeah. her. She was good. I like High her. High Vulture 75 said, "Oh wait, no more Joker video." Uh we're yes, we're not uh, we're not showing it again. We Two did. more, man. Yes. 20 piece said good night, and not that John Stewart said, "How much for 10, Brett? I'll pay." Um, I don't know what that means. Well, let me. But, uh, he, he wants to know how much ups? we need for the tenth crisis oh, the party. Tenth crisis party. We need um, currently forty dollars. I think thirty or yeah. thirty or forty. Thirty. All right, hold on. Yeah. Ish. Here, keep the change. <laughs> actually, that's about how much you won in poker against yeah. him. Yes. Oh yeah, yes. you won poker. I, I actually can we can we give that shout out <laughs> yes. real quick? Oh, yeah. yeah. Not only did I win in poker, but before leaving, I took down the man, the myth, the legend himself, Mr. Tim Pool, with an all-in call. Took him down and won a whole whopping thirteen dollars on top of the twenty I put in. Yes, I, ha incredible. I do have witnesses. Witnesses, I'm right yep. here. Yes, I witnessed it happen. It's real. Okay, we've got more. Um, scroll back. Okay, uh, Tech said drip, drip, drip. Disco Jensen said the meter isn't moving fast enough. The Underp Taker said Underp. I love it. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> he said, always wear your pee in britches on Friday. He's true. He's right. High Vulture 75 said, great guest, truly come back. He's not gone yet. <laughs> he hasn't left yet. <laughs> yeah. And it's then, like, a, something um, like a comeback, but I'm yeah. like, I'm still Not here. that John Stewart sent us a $50 super chat and said, okay. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you so much. Trudy Jones sent a $50 super chat. They're trying to get away. Don't let them. <laughs> Steve Kralik sent $20 that said, crisis. We are, we have a officially reached we got another one here from the Undertaker. taker he said i can do this all, all day, day. <laughs> he's, um, captain he's america Steve rogers of yeah. our, of i'm literally podcast. auctioneering over here uh yeah yeah <laughs> can, I, can i give a can i give a shout out to my godsons real quick yeah. yes absolutely i will shout out to my best friend or my first my wife charlotte my best friend brian and my godsons willie Bo and bryson dd bean Deanie Bean. And shout out to the baby you're expecting. And, the, and, and little well. Masqua. Yes, he's yes. coming soon. <laughs> we actually just went all the way to 11 now. Oh, We've made it to 11. Nice. Yes. That's so. awesome. Okay. Um, we have more. <laughs> Shane H. Wilder <laughs> said, okay, I got to get to the store. I'm out of Zins. Disco <laughs> Jensen said, I spent all my loot on arms for the second Boogaloo. You can, dis you can disavow that one or say <laughs> you lost the uh, boating, ac bo boating accident, yeah, my friend. The Undertaker said, speak more slowly. Hard to no! understand. Yeah, no, no, yeah, you got to speed it up. Did no diggity said, let's not go just yet. Well, we're almost there. Mary, one more. Let's, no. The Undertaker said, I'd like to thank the Academy. <laughs> Undertaker, can you please follow me? I want to know someone like that. You're funny. Let's Gavard let's, let's the me. Clown just said hi. Hi, Vulture 75. Okay, thank you. Hi, Vulture 75. Bro, I'm hungry. I know. My, my stomach's starting to hurt, too, a little bit. Hi, Vulture 75 said, welcome to the three-hour club, guest. <laughs> yes, there is an exclusive three-hour show is. club. Oh, Organized oh, business services said beer money. Nice. Thank you. Corey I Anderson, can't drink, but thank you. Yeah, that's fine. Corey Anderson said Siaka and Clifton Duncan bubbly cop movie Daily Wire. Oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm out of money in my money I think, gun. I think he meant buddy cop movie. What do you I say? literally bubbly. have... Yeah, bu I have, buddy cop. I have no money left to put in my money gun. Like uh, it's over. Actually, we're working... Uh, Jer uh, oh. Jared Lemaster with uh, uh, Babylon B and I, we are crafting a little buddy comedy cop nice. thing so let's go be on the lookout oh, for that okay. yes yeah, yeah. interesting yeah um okay shane h. h wilder said it goes to 11 the undertaker said almost there the undertaker don't tell us you're in pain we like that 
High Vulture 75 <laughs> said, now this is a hostage party. With that being said, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, we will be back with another episode on Monday. We'll see you then, guys. One Wait, more from No Diggy. He says, yes. Uh, he says, yes, let's know. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>